is the guy we told you about earlier, Barry Belli, number 27. And Sam, what really, really makes it unusual is he's not only the placement kicker, but also the putter does both jobs very well. Well, you also see the return team. He's got the ball laying on the ground. They're ready for any trick onside kick at this point. You can see five guys up front waiting as that ball is laying on the ground. They know Jim Sweeney is liable to do anything tonight in this game. Now he's going to set the ball down. And Barry Belli is a great kicker, not only from field goal, but from kicking off. Last year, they only gave up 14 yards per return on kickoffs. A lot of that is due to the big uh, kicks of Barry Belli. Say and McCullough are deep for the 49ers. This is Tyrone McCullough who takes it and, oh, steps right out of bounds on the 10-yard line. Let's set up the Long Beach offense for you now. They've got one of the fine quarterbacks in the PCAA, Jeff Graham, threw for almost 3,000 yards. Watch for Michael Roberts in the backfield. He has got a lot of speed. The receivers, they like to go to Derek Washington and Tyrone McCullough on the outside. The tackles, big Dave McKinnon leads the way 6'5 and 280. And a good balance line in the middle, Mike Hollinghouse, the center, is the man who makes the plays for them. He is their senior, the veteran on the offensive line. That was a big mistake right away to take that ball. Terrible field position to start an away game. 90 yards away, Washington McCullough split wide. It is Jeff Graham, the quarterback. And drop, first man through, across the 15 to the 17-yard line, the fullback Shelton. Let's take a look now at the defense for the Bulldogs. The Bulldog defense, Jethro Franklin, 19 and a half sacks last year. Watch him on passing downs. They're the linebackers. Garnet Fountain starting his first game. Great athletic ability, can make some big plays. The inside linebackers, Jay Wilkinson, moves from outside to inside to try to shore up the middle of that defense. The cornerbacks, Fred Wilburn, is the best cover man in his safety. Rod Webster, 12 career interceptions. Sheldon got seven on first down, second and three for the 49ers. The pitch goes back to Roberts, and down he goes after 17. Fresno State, there. we talked about that bulldog defense. It's no more than uh, what Buddy Ryan has done for years, both in Chicago and in Philadelphia, the 46 defense, putting two linebackers on the tight end side, trying to really mess up the blocking patterns of the offense. It was 43, James Rivera in on the stop. He's the rover. He'll be all over the field. So the down goes to third, the distance the same. Third and three. Keep in mind, the 49ers need to get to the 20 for the first down. Just underway in the first quarter, no score at Fresno. And hit as he throws, it is behind the intended receiver, number three, Michael Roberts. And a big pass rush from Tracy Rogers, 45, the strong side linebacker. It'll be fourth down for Long Beach. Well, third and three, you look for the tight end of the backs. That's who he's looking for, Michael Roberts. But uh, again, the blitz by Tracy Rogers, that eight man up front, you never know who's coming. Nobody picked up Rogers. They quickly bring in a whole punt team. Lujan, the punter, gets it away. A fair catch is called for and taken at the 46 yard line. Flag down on the field as well. We're going to meet now the offense for. Fresno, and it starts with Dave Telford making just his second start at quarterback for the Bulldogs. Kelly Skipper is the man they'll look for in the running back game. The receivers, well, Ron Jenkins, number six, he makes a lot of things happen, especially when he gets in the backfield. Offensively, look at big Mike Withercup, 6'6", 297. Offensive line anchored in the center position there by Brian Fuller. Chris had a five-yard penalty in, in college ball. You have to stay with two yards away from the punt return, man. If you break that plane, as the referee tells you, that's exactly what happened. He broke the plane, a five-yard penalty. Jenkins uh, is the flanker. Now he really is the slot man. The pitch goes back, and this is Kelly Skipper to the right side. Skipper breaks one tackle, pulled down at the 45 in a gain of almost five yards. Tom Keynes, number one defensively. And the Long Beach State defense. You can see Skipper, he's tough. He broke a tackle right away. It takes two guys to bring him down. You got to keep coming defensively. Keep that pursuit. Keep that hustle. Game four, second down and six. Bulldogs first possession. Now they shift the tight end. Jones comes from the right to the left side. Shotgun formation. Here's the handoff inside, though, to Skipper. Skipper goes down to the 42-yard line. It'll be about three yards shy of the first down. Now let's check the defense for the 49ers. Al Akins, three sacks already. He leads that front line for Long Beach State. The linebackers, Philip Morris, and another guy with great athletic ability. They say could be an All-American candidate. Their leading tackler, Tom Kane, on the inside, number one. 
the cornerbacks, Keith Jenkins, three sacks, two interceptions he's starting tonight. And there's the safeties. Lane McCarthy, another guy that blitzes quite a bit. Three sacks already for him this season. As you can tell, these guys like to blitz their defensive backs. Played about two and a half minutes, still scoreless. It's third down and three now for Fresno State. The Long Beach 42. Hits again, Skipper. Trying to get to the 40. Will not make it. It's going to be shy. It's going to be a fourth down for Fresno State. Philip Morrison, 43. One of their defensive captains outside linebacker is up to make the play. And that we talked about great athletic ability. He just handled the second tight end in for blocking purposes, strung it right down the line, and used that sideline to knock Kelly Skipper right out of bounds. It's going to force the punt. Of course, Belli also is the punter. And a very good one at that, averaging 40.6 yards. Jim Sweeney playing for some field position here on fourth down and three from the Long Beach 42. They'll punt it away. Alexander is deep for the 49ers. Belli, no rush. Fair catch call for Alexander. Let's go out of bounds. At the 10 yard line, they'll start from there again. No score here in Fresno. This is a 19 inch television with a picture as crisp and clear as any you'll find. Now imagine a picture just as crisp, just as clear, but larger. In fact, it's 86% larger than even a 26-inch screen. It's the world's first 35-inch direct view television, the television that only one manufacturer could put together. Mitsubishi. Football on ESPN is being brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Michelob, so exceptionally smooth. The night belongs to Michelob. Chris Lincoln and Stan White, glad you're with us on a hot night in Fresno, California. Game time temperature near 100 degrees on this October 1st. Good look at Jeff Graham, the fine junior quarterback for Long Beach. Their second possession. Both teams fail to get first downs. Their first time off. No score, 11-37 in the first quarter. Graham from his 10, split back behind him. Split left, like or right. To the outside for about two yards goes the fullback, Lafayette Shelton. Jeff Rowe Franklin is a great pass rusher, that's for sure. Let's watch him in the run here. Dave McKinnon, the tackle, he just stands him straight up, controls the line of scrimmage, comes off, almost got double teamed there, beat both of them. That's a just great line play. So I'm sure the pro scouts see him as a pass rusher. They want to know if he can play the run. Looking at that, Kelly Ken. Second down and nine for the 49ers. Graham looks the defense over. Straight eye backfield goes to the top of the eye and slashing inside to about the 14-yard line was Michael Roberts. It was Rod Webster, the strong safety 19, who cut in from his outside position there and made the play. Right. He almost said outside linebacker, and that's about what he was playing. They used their safeties as an eighth man up front. Reb Webster went to the weak side of the formation, even though he's a strong safety, cut in behind the line of scrimmage to trip up Roberts. Both teams seem to want to establish the run. Both of them haven't been able to do it yet this year. Michael Roberts, number three, at the top of the screen in the backfield. Now three carries, ten yards. Graham back to pass for the first completion of the game. Throws over the middle, incomplete. Intended for the tight end. Tracy Rogers, 45, was on top of him. Incomplete, intended for Brian Wiss. And it's three downs and out again for the 49ers. Fourth down and six. A good coverage that time. Tracy Rogers, you remember, remember on third down last time, came in blitz and forced the quick pass. This time he drops off the cover. They do a lot of different things defensively. Long Beach again hustles the punt team. And Will Hunt's got to get it off in a hurry, and he does. Beautiful high spiral. Fair catch. Anthony Williams goes to the knee at the 42. And it'll be Fresno State's second turnout on offense. We're scoreless from Fresno. Back in a moment. Sets it apart. 
Thunderbird Turbo Coupe. Run with it. ESPN brings back some great sports memories Friday. Like Ben Hogan's U.S. Open victory after a near fatal accident. And Bobby Thompson's shot heard round the world. Then NFL's football follies hit your funny bone hard. And Lawrence Taylor shows how he became the league's MVP. The hits keep on coming when Lupe Aquino battles Gianfranco Rossi in Italy for the World Super Bowl Championship. Friday on ESPN. Well, there's the man in charge of the 49er offense, Bob Owens, their first-year offensive coordinator, came to Long Beach from Utah State, and they're trying to make some things happen, talking with the coaches upstairs here in the booth, trying to figure out what to do with the Fresno defense. Well, I'm sure they're checking out to see if they're doing what they had seen on films, if the blocking schemes they've practiced are going to work with what they're seeing in the game. We do not have a first down yet in this football game. Ten of them left, scoreless first quarter. As the Bulldogs are set with Pelfer, the quarterback. One man in the backfield, he gets the football, picks up 45, goes to the 50 and across midfield. Dean Collins, the fullback, a senior. Interesting story with Dean Stan. Uh, they told him after spring ball, you're not going to be tailback anymore, you're going to be fullback. They're really going with two tailbacks in this offense, which gives them a little bit more running ability, not as much blocking out of the fullback position. He went to the two tight ends, two wide receivers, single back balance formation. We're seeing a lot of different things by Fresno State. Jenkins and Williams, the wide receivers. Telford again at the top of the eye. There's a big hole to the 45, down to the 40, and a first down for Kelly Skipper, number 26. He's the star running back for Fresno State, and he found some running room. Tom Keynes, the linebacker, Lane McCarthy, the strong safety. Number one and 13, respectively, made the hit. Gain of seven. Here it is. This is the isolation. See, good block right here by Dean Collins. We talked about it. He took the linebacker to the ground and opened up that hole for Kelly Skipper. If you can get that type of blocking out of a tailback turn fullback, you're in good shape. Yeah, Dean Collins was not at all happy with the switch at first, but uh, has made the adjustment, playing well for him in the backfield. The first first down of the game. First and ten dogs at the 40 of Long Beach. Goes to the outside. Skipper 40, 35, 30. 25, 20, down to the 15 and out of bounds there. Anthony Williams, number three, the flanker, threw a good block in there. Mark Torville, the free safety, made the tackle. 24 yards on the play. Well, the thing was, good protection. Watch Whitacom here, the All-American candidate, just does good blocking, cuts him down so he can throw that quick pass. There you see Skipper taking it, goes down the sideline. Now, Long Beach was in a blitz and didn't have anybody covering Skipper in the flat. When you go for a blitz, you got to have some man-to-man -man coverage. You can't let somebody like Skipper get the ball all alone. Gain of 24, the Bulldogs. Now first and ten at the Long Beach 16-yard line. Telford right back to Skipper. Skipper tries to cut inside the 15, gets a couple of yards. That's about it. John McMaster, number 48, the linebacker, one of the game captains here for the 49ers, made the hit. If he could have stayed inside, Chris, he had a pretty good hole. You know, they're only averaging 95 yards a game rushing. In fact, against UCLA, they had 26 carries for a minus 26 yards. They want to get that rushing game going. So far, five carries have had 18 yards. Skipper has been the workhorse. As you look at head coach Jim Sweeney, they've had trouble getting into the end zone. Only three offensive touchdowns this year. Scoreless in the first quarter. Second and seven. Ball in the 13. Skipper overthrown. And that's not hard to do. Skipper is five feet six inches. Telford at six three. And uh, usually that field has a bit of a slope to it, Stan. And it, it's a it sure does. <laughs> and that's one of the drawbacks of being five foot six. Obviously, the, the good point is you can hide behind your offensive lineman. That was just a little slip screen, as it's called. They'd slip him out of the backfield with a couple of linemen. If he'd have caught that ball, it would have been a touchdown. There's only one man over there at Long Beach State just overthrown. Third down and seven. Jenkins and Williams are the wideouts. Split backs behind Telford. Telford rolls to the right to throw. 
Has some room to run. Ten out of bounds at the six, and I think he got his first down. Had to cut inside the six for the first down marker, and I think he did just that. Telford with a first and goal, and this is where Long Beach can get kind of tough. Well, yeah, it sure is. Jim Sweeney said he's a smart quarterback. He showed me right there. He saw them converging on him. He got out of bounds. He wants <laughs> to keep that starting position. But if you remember against Michigan, they had two great goal line stands. In fact, they stopped Michigan on the first possession twice on third and fourth down from the one-yard line. So here's where Long Beach is good defensively. First goal to goal from the five for Fresno. This is Skipper dies for the two. Went over the right side, blocks him Jeff Skidmore, 6'5", 285, score. And the right guard, 6'4", 265, senior, Paul Portis. Just an off-tackle play. You'll see the offside guard right there, Gary Walton, lead the kick out. Skipper just fouls behind him. Again, it's hard to find you behind those big offensive linemen. Walton, 6'2", 265. He can hide and jump forward for a few yards. Second and goal from the two. Skipper at the top of the eye, Dean Collins the fullback, if you look at it, from the end zone view, and now Dave Tucker calls the signal, Skipper, straight ahead and pushed back. R.J. Corey's number seven was one of the men up top. It's exactly what we saw, we looked at the film of that Michigan game, when they tried to go over the top, there were people meeting him as he went over the top. Tom Keynes had a couple great plays in the Michigan game, let's see where he is on this play, Skipper gets the ball and leaps right here. There's Keynes right there making the stop. You see him underneath. Oh, excuse me. That's R.J. Kors who comes in at free safety in these goal line situations. Looked like a one, but it was a seven. Have a player shaken up on the field, and wouldn't you know it, my Samoan friend, Tanita Fomosili. Fomosili, <laughs> there he is down. Number 50. Coach Wiseman <laughs> promised me he would not play him. <laughs> we spent half the afternoon trying to say his name. Mama Musili. And you also Mama said uh, if he was in there, you wouldn't say his name, but you had to now because <laughs> to. he's hurt. He did that on purpose. <laughs> Big freshman shaken up in the end zone. Uh, Coach Sweeney called his entire offensive team over to have a word or two. 6.52 left in the scoreless first quarter. Fresno trying to do something about that as they have a third down and goal to goal at the one-yard line. And... For both these teams, extremely important. The offense has really been the problem all season long. Yeah, they haven't been able to put points on the board, although, as we said, Long Beach was able to do it early in the season, 81 points in the first two games. But Fresno hasn't been able to get anything going all year long. In fact, to the four touchdowns, one of them was on defense. And a quick score here, especially with the problems they've had in playing those three games right in a row, you could wear, wear them down both physically and mentally by taking an early lead. Well, Fresno State is used to uh, success in football. They were 9-2 last year, 11-0 and 1-85, 11-1 and 82, 9-2 and 77. Here they are so far with that 1-2 and two record, their only win over Western Illinois. Lost to a good Washington State team and then played very well against UCLA. Shut out 17 to nothing. Let's look over at Long Beach State. Got off to a good start. Sure did. You look at those scores. Beat Montana State 51 to 15, 30 points against Weber State. But uh, Cal State Fullerton came back and uh, crushed them, and that led to the game against Michigan. And Michigan, they just were out man. They played a good first half. As we said, we watched the films. They got wore down as Michigan just ran the ball down their throat for over 400 yards on the ground. Coming out of the football game for Long Beach State, shaken up. Of course, the nose guard number 50, Puma Musili. And I guarantee you, folks, he will be back. Michigan's beating a lot of Big Ten teams 49 to nothing, too. Let me judge it. <laughs> Here we go. Third down, goal to goal at the one yard line. Telford. There it is. And diving in is Kelly Skipper off the right side for the touchdown. And the Bulldogs are on the board first. before that one yard run we'll update him now eight carries 23 yards one reception for 24 yards so as Stan White said at the opening of the show he was going to be the man to make their offense go and he has tonight Kelly Skipper the big man on that drive his first touchdown this year on the ground well this is Barry Belli he is perfect three of three conversions so far 
On the team, it's blocked. Rushing in is Tom Keynes, number one, the linebacker, and he stuffs that play. So that'll pick up the 49ers. 6.47 left in this first quarter. Fresno State's on the board. 6 nothing. as we take a look at the touchdown again by Skipper. Again, the off-tackle play they've liked so much. Remember, dear, you've only had your license one day. I'll be fine, Mom. Don't worry. Don't forget your first stop. When you stop at a Shell station, you get more than America's best-selling gasolines. You get all the little extras you may not find at other stations. Here. I've never done this before. Well, I guess that's it. Thank you. Come back and see us. Because at Shell, we haven't forgotten. That was easy. Our service station got its name, Shell. Experience the difference. Ford Ranger. It's hot on the trail, cool on the street. Ranger, take you where the action is, day or night. Ford Ranger, your fun time. Welcome back to Fresno, California. Looking at the Bulldogs of Fresno State as their kicking specialist, Barry Belli, trying to shake off that block extra point a moment ago as the Dogs went 57 yards in nine plays. Took three minutes and 24 seconds. Kelly Skipper going over on third and goal from the one yard. The extra point blocked. Belli kicks it away. Deep. Tyrone McCullough is going to let it fly out of bounds and will take it back five and do it again. That's what he should have done in the opening kickoff. He caught the ball on that dead corner at the 10 yard line, went right out of bounds, put them backed up, and used to, the first two times they had the ball, they had to start on their own 10 yard line. That's tough on a team, especially one that's uh, suffering the uh, effects of the last three games the way Long Beach has been here. Jack Gatto telling us about the uh, ball being kicked out of bounds. We'll set him back another five yards. And Belli will kick it now from the 30-yard line. They blocked the extra point. That's a big play. How many times have you seen that happen? It comes back to haunt you. It really takes the edge off the touchdown. It really, in effect, becomes two field goals instead of a touchdown. It also picks up the other team. It gives them a play, something that they can get excited about. Well, I'm sure Coach Reisberg on the Long Beach State bench is hoping for some field position. He just hasn't had it so far. Both their drives starting back at their own 10-yard line. And they're still looking for their first first down of the opening quarter. 6.47 to play in the first 15. Six nothing Bulldogs as Bell I tries to kick again. Now another flag goes down. <laughs> You'll have to tell us what this one is. Talking it over here. Our referee tonight is Jack Gatto. Pacific Coast Athletic Association crew here tonight. And we're going to put it back to the 25-yard line. I haven't seen that before the kickoff, the uh, illegal procedure. What do you do? Uh, they're all talking and like any good kick team, they're all talking and pointing at each other. You notice, hey, it's not me. It's got to be him. Now Jim Sweeney's going to try to see if anybody has an answer. You know nobody's talking to him over there. That's right. Well, that's what you always do on the field. You always, even if it's your fault, you point the other guy and say it's my fault. You know. So on television, it looks like you're saying, no, you messed up. <laughs> you guys know where the camera is, huh? Belli from the 25-yard line. Let's see if the 49ers get some field position out of this one. Pellet picks it up. Now at the 25-30, 35-yard line to the 36. So that improves the position of the 49ers by about 26 yards. They'll start at their 36-yard line, first and 10. McCullough, of course, is son of uh, Earl McCullough, great player in the NFL. Color comes out now. Mark Say will replace him at the flanker back position. Looking for Jeff Gray to start uh, throwing that football. Boy, in a fine season last year, threw for 2,921 yards and 20 touchdowns. Jeff Graham, the junior from Costa Mesa, California. He shifted in the right backfield. Shelton and Roberts at the top of the eye. This is Roberts off the left side and stumbles across to the 36 yard line for just a short game. You know, Mike Shepard was the coach at Long Beach last year, and they threw the ball time and time again. In fact, Graham averaged about 40 passes a game last year. Now, with Rice picked the coach, they've cut down 
to 20 passes a game, but I think they're going to have to start throwing the ball against this eight-man front. I don't care what they want to do balance-wise. they got to do something to move the football. Coach Rice big on the sidelines, thinking about his offensive selection now on a second down and nine. Running back, finds a hole on the right side, goes across the 40 to the 42-yard line again is Mike Roberts. That's a pretty good hole opened up on that side of the line. Here you see it. Just a kick out on the tackle. We'll see what the linebacker right there is. A good fullback block. Took the feet out from the linebacker and opened up that hole. Tell you what, you got to stay on your feet as a linebacker. You can't let that fullback, Lafayette Shelton, knock you down. Roberts leading Terrier for Long Beach. Five for 17. They're the third and five as Graham. Looks for a first down and incomplete. Oh, he had him wide open, the fullback. Lafayette Shelton drifted out to the flat. There was nobody around him there, Stan. Again, the blitz came, and again, this time, Fresno does not cover the back out of the backfield. A good pass, and he may still be running. You know, last year, their fullback, Mark Kessman, caught uh, 99 balls. Uh, they like to throw the fullback. Again, the all-time leading NCAA receiver, both Howard Twilley's record, and now flags fly as, again, Long Beach tried to get that quick snap off of their pump team. It was Mark Templeton, excuse me. Fourth down and five. Good ball to CJ, 15 team, five yard family, and keep it down. Thank you, Mr. Gatto, the referee tonight. In fact, Templeton broke the all time NCAA record of Howard Twilley with 262 catches. Long Beach State, that's their second penalty for 10 yards. Those are the same numbers for Fresno. Began to punt it away. Again, a nice high spiral. Fair catch sign goes up and down to the knees. The 29-yard line is Michael Roberts. 5.24 left in this first quarter. It's the dog six, the 49ers. Nothing. Someone once said that the only time a BMW owner removes his car from the road is to remove the road from his car. The new 325 IS adds new meaning to that insight. A 39% increase in power, competition-tuned suspension, serious aerodynamics, all of which makes washing the BMW 325 IS an act of futility. The new 1987 BMWs are in at Weber Motors. Randall Stump here for American Family Sports and Fitness Center. American has it all, and all for one low monthly fee. Racquetball, full Nautilus weight room, swimming pool, aerobics, kung fu, and much more. Special rates are now available for students, Fresno City, County, and all school district employees. Remember, keeping fit is fun the American way. American Sports Center, Blackstone and Shaw, behind the pepper mill, or call 226-8686. The NFL, like you've never seen it before. Every Sunday, NFL Theater showcases great players in the world premieres of dramatic new programs. Sunday nights at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Back to Fresno State. First and ten for the Bulldogs. This is Skipper, and Skipper hit in the back. Takes the tackle, 30, 35, dive to the 37, and... Running back Kelly Skipper's been a busy man tonight. Yeah. Now nine out of the 14 plays, he's had the football in his hands. And you can see what that low center of gravity does for him. Only 5'6", but people bounce off of him. they got to get his legs out from under him. Got to grab a hold of that jersey if you have to and pull him down. Anything. Don't let him continue forward for seven yards. Kelly Skipper. Split backfield now along with Dean Collins there. Gained eight on the last step. Second and two. In motion, Anthony Williams, this goes to the fullback. This time it is Dean Collins. Moves up close to the 40. Looks a little shy of the first down. Tim Witherspoon, 54, the outside linebacker there. Made the tackle on the play. It is first down. He got it up there. Right up to the 40. The rule defensively usually is a little guy you tackle high. You grab a jersey. A big guy you tackle low so he doesn't run over you. But uh, Skipper's a little bit of both. You know, he's a, a, a short guy, but he's big and round. First down and 10. 
From the 40-yard line for Fresno State. Inside to Skipper. Skipper across the 40 to the 43-yard line. Good job defensively by Long Beach State. Gene Lemmers, a reserve linebacker, 66. Helped jam up that play. Also in there, as usual, Philip Morrison, 43. Again, uh, they're playing their spots right. They're just missing tackles. Linebacker shot the gap. It's the second time they've run this play off a shotgun right there. Should have made the tackle right in the backfield. Lane McCarthy, the strong safety, just missed it. Second down and eight. Fakes the skipper this time over, rolling out, looking. Now throws back to his tight end. First down, 45, 40, 38 yard line. It is Rich Kartleski, number 88. He did not get a start tonight. He's a 6'5", 228 pound sophomore. That Coach Sweeney said he loves to involve his tight ends in his offense. That for 20 yards and a first down for Fresno State. And he was the third option on this. He looked first to the wide receiver, then to the fullback you see sneaking out here. They had him well covered. The third option, the tight end. They'll watch him look back for number three. Hits the tight end right there, wide open over the middle. Again, back to pass is Telford. He's blurring it out way overthrown into the end zone. Ron Jenkins is about 10 yards behind it. Telford now 2 of 4, throwing the football for 44 yards tonight. 6'3", 195 pound junior. A career passing later at Spokane Falls uh, Community College in Washington. He threw there for more than 2,600 yards and 22 touchdowns. An honor student. Most interesting is Coach Sweeney said he tried to talk him out of walking on. But uh, he said, fortunately, Telford would not listen to Mr. Sweeney's advice. And I can play here. Walked on. And now he's starting for Jim Sweeney. I tell you what, he didn't complete that, but he showed him he could throw along. That'll loosen up that defense a little bit. Telford's got a second and ten as the official stops play here. And a timeout has been called by the Bulldogs. 3-19 left in the first quarter. Fresno State leading 6 to nothing. As we'll tell you what's coming up here on ESPN this Saturday, a college football doubleheader. It's the number two ranked Huskers of Nebraska hosting South Carolina. That's at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, live from Lincoln, Nebraska. And then at 7.30 Eastern, boy, that's a tough place to play, Tiger Stadium, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, as the eighth ranked Tigers host number 18, Florida. And a top 20 matchup of two teams there. Big doubleheader of college football on ESPN Saturday, South Carolina, Nebraska, Florida, LSU. I tell you, my Buckeyes went down there to uh, oh. Tiger Stadium and came out with a tie, but uh, it looked bad for a while that uh, Tom Hodgson was uh, hot. I'm just glad that uh, uh, Mike Archer decided to give him a rest while he was hot and let the Buckeyes get back in the game. Good shot at Telford. The quarterback for Fresno State. You know, Jim Sweeney said these guys are in a tough spot. Everybody's talking about them in relation to Kevin Sweeney, of course, who only set the all-time passing record in college football. They're over 10,600 yards in his career. Yeah, the rumor around here is the wrong Sweeney left. <laughs> and Jim Sweeney's the one who mentioned that, too. There's the bulldog of Fresno State. 319 left, opening quarter. Fresno State leading 6 0. They have a second down 10 at the Long Beach State 40. And again, it is Telford to throw. Has a man wide open right side of the 30. At the 25 yard line, still on his feet, struggles down to the 23. At fullback, Dean Collins again. If you looked at this formation at the snap, you could see that they were cheating. Watch how the bats line up, if we can see it on this replay. We, we missed that, but they're cheating. The fullback got up in front so he could sneak out of the backfield. The linebacker just did not take him. Again, the bats are really getting out of the backfield free tonight, and nobody's even covering when they get the ball through them. They're getting big yardage. Good look at Dean Collins there. Transfer from Boise State. Got 18 on that play. Oh! Telford had everything except the football. I think he saw Tom Kane's coming, and he said, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> well, that goes down there. First downs to this point, Fresno State, six, Long Beach State, still looking for their initial first down. The Collinders on the defense, it looked like to me that Telford had pulled out, but uh, I guess maybe somebody else had jumped earlier. Let's rise big along the sideline. Good ball. Defense. Repeat first down. So it is now first down and five. Football at the 18-yard line of Long Beach for Fresno. 
Telford has Jenkins and Williams. As his split in flanker, pitches back to Skipper. Skipper sweeps to the 15. Flag flies as he goes out of bounds around the 11 yard line. The flag on the play. Mark Porterville, 26. Pushing 26. Kelly Skipper out of bounds. We had a holding. I think Anthony Williams, the wide receiver, there it is, was holding Mark Torville on that sweep. He almost grabbed a hold of his jersey and tackled him, and that was the call. The ref, right in front of the referee, too. If you're going to hold, do it on the interior line, not right in front of the ref. So they'll step it off. Penalty has almost got Jim Sweeney crazy at UCLA. They had a bunch of silly penalties. Offsides, illegal procedures, really costly. Set. Repeat first down. See if we can catch the penalty here as we take another look at Skipper going to the outside. See him right there. Watch him. He almost tackles him. He grabs the hold of that leg. <laughs> yeah, that's holding. That's tackling. <laughs> I don't know if he gets credit for that in defensive stats or not. This wide receiver. Those wide receivers don't block anyhow. They just try to get in the way. Penalty's five yards, so it's back where it started. First and ten at the 23. Delford looking downfield. His band fell down, jumped up at Collins again. Dean Collins had dropped down to the seat of his pants, got back up just as that ball was being thrown, and it's complete. Down inside the 15 yard line. Tell you what, this uh, play action pass is sure slowing up the rush. He's going. He's got plenty of time to throw. When a guy falls down, watching Dean Collins fall down, get back up, and make the catch. If you got that much time to throw, you're going to complete a lot of passes. Second down and two. Gain of eight on the play. The Bulldogs at the 49er 15 and a fumble there. Pulling up in center. Dave Telford left the ball on the ground. I think he dove back in and covered it himself, though. Yeah, he got it, although you'll see all the uh, white-shirted uh, Long Beach State guys pointing the other way. That's something you're taught right away. Always point your direction. The ref may believe you. He just doesn't get the snap, but he's able to get back and get the football. Luckily for, for Fresno State, uh, they have a good drive going here. You hate to lose it on an exchange with the center. Third down and two. Fresno State, one of two in third down conversions. Pitch back to Skipper outside. At the 10, hurdles the man. Goes down to the seven. First and goal, Fresno State. Lane McCarthy, the strong safety. 13 was over there to help clear the way. Ray Langham, good block along with Jeff Trussell, the right side leading the way for Kelly Skipper. This is something a little guy likes to do. He just hangs on to his blocker and just follows him. If he could have got off, he may have been able to cut inside and walk in the end zone. But watch him get in his hip pocket right here and just stay with him. He's saying, big man, just take me to the end zone. First down, goal to goal. Fresno State at the seven-yard line. New fullback, Adrian Cooks, is in to replace Collins. Skipper at the top of the eye. Make to Skipper. This is Telford. Looking, looking. Pressure is on. Stumbles and falls down at the 12 yard line. Coming in was Al Aikens, number 60. He gave him a swat and his forward momentum. Telford could not regain his feet. Well, that'll be a sack behind the line of scrimmage. We talked about Aikens being the leader in sacks going into this game. That's his fourth one on the season. A little surprising call the way they're running down the field. And now all of a sudden they put themselves in a tough situation. Goal. Second goal from the 13 yard line. High formation. Jenkins. Split. Here comes the reverse play as it comes to Anthony Williams. Williams at the 10. At the 5. He'll score. And Williams. Touchdown. First goal state. The reverse to the flanker, Anthony Williams. They sealed it off nicely on that left side. And Coach Sweeney feels good about that as the Bulldogs are in the end zone for the second time here in this opening quarter. Well, they go for two here now that they missed the first extra point. Barry Bella is in the game. I'd be surprised if we don't see something here trying to get two points on the board. Tell you what, you can see the uh, wear and tear. All right, look, at the, look at the end zone. Look at that defensive team. They're all on their knees. They're all sucking for air at this point. They're playing those uh, four games in 13 days right now. It's going to be a tough on them. Games, well, Barry Belli, Barry Belli is going to try for the single conversion point. He decided not to go for two. At least that's the way it looks. Oh, and the snap flag flies. It goes through the holder's hands, and the ball rolls dead at the 22-yard line. Ron Jenkins, number six, was the man who was supposed to hold the football. A flag flew just as the ball was snapped, though. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I think a little bit of anticipation by Tom Gaines. That time, a little bit quick getting across the line. Last time, he blocked it doing that. 
That's the call. Offsides. Long Beach State. Here it is. Jimmy, yeah, he broke the plane before the ball was snapped. He almost beat the snap back then. That's, That's how he got the first one. So right. what, what do you lose? You try to anticipate. Now even more so to go for two points. Now it's, they got only a yard and a half to go. I think they want a timeout. They must have heard uh, Stan White suggest in. Jim Sweeney says, you know, Stan, I might think about this now. 16 seconds left in the first quarter. The Dogs lead the 49ers 12-0, and they've got a decision to make here. Looks like they will go for two. Yes, Dave Telford, the quarterback, is coming back in. Returning to ESPN, the season premiere as the men on skates return. The Montreal Canadiens, the Philadelphia Flyers, live Thursday, October 8th, 7.30 Eastern Time, the premiere of the National Hockey League on ESPN. They've been going for one uh, two-point conversion earlier this year, and Ron Jenkins caught a pass from Telford for the two points. So uh, a lot of teams have the same two-point play uh, in their arsenal each time. We'll see what they do. Although this time they don't have men. They just got two tight ends. You have double tight end in Jones and Bartleski. Now flags fly again. And now Long Beach State, after taking a look at what Fresno is planning to do, they have called a timeout. <laughs> yeah. well, the, Tom Keynes wasn't even on the field yet. He's still talking to the coach. He was running on as they were lining up. Well, a while ago, we had a touchdown. I'm trying to remember what it looked like. Let's see if we can see it again. <laughs> it took a while. It's the reverse play. Skipper, hands off. Anthony Williams is wide open. There's one guy around here. He almost makes a great play. Watch him cut underneath right here and, and try to make the play Stacy Alexander, but he just did not quite get there in time. There he is, Anthony Williams, who scored the second touchdown of the night. You know, when you're in a position like Alexander, you're saying, hey, all these uh, convoy in front of me, you decide to take a chance. You cut inside, you're supposed to stay outside, but you know if you do, you're going to get steamrolled. He took a chance and almost came up with a great play. There's a look behind the Long Beach State defense. And the Bulldog fan whipping things up here at Fresno. Well, the fans really have turned out, you know, just since the game started. The stands have really filled up here with the red wave. Going for two now. Telford has Collins, Skipper behind him. Sends the tight end in motion. Jones goes back to the other side of Skipper, and Skipper is in the end zone for two points. Skipper got out of the grasp of 43, Philip Morrison, and backed into the end zone for the two points. And the Bulldogs make up for that blocked extra point with two. I'll tell you what, Philip Morrison uh, made a great play because he came out of nowhere. It looked like it was going to be uh, what they call a walk the dog, be able to walk into the end zone. But he comes out of nowhere. You see him back in the end zone. Watch him close right here. That's great athletic ability. He's just skipper so low to the ground with that great balance. It's tough to tackle that kid. Long Beach State's got to do something different here uh, offensively. Forget that balanced attack. It's not working. Go back to your passing game. It worked for you before. Here's the scoring drive. Second touchdown for the Bulldogs. 11 plays, 71 yards. Took five minutes and eight seconds. Williams on the 13-yard flanker reverse play. And then the two-point conversion. 14 nothing now. And just 16 seconds remaining in this opening quarter. The whole crowd standing up at this point as they get ready for the kickoff, a tradition here at uh, Bulldog Stadium. This is the time of possession. Uh, Fresno State 10:42, Long Beach 4:18. Oh. They're beating them down. That's what you want to do. That's exactly what you'd want to do if you were in Jim Sweeney's shoes, knowing they came off those three tough games. McCullough and Sayer deep, saying for Bell Eyes kick. This is McCullough inside the tent. 20 at the 23, and he's warm under there. 11 seconds left in the opening quarter. Fresno stayed in the quarter with nine plays, 57 yards, then went 71 yards in 11 plays. But here's the man that can make things happen in a hurry for Long Beach State. Jeff Graham threw for 20 touchdowns last year, but so far tonight has not completed a pass. 
0 for 3. You see his stats this year. Good completion percentage, better than 60 percent. Graham going to work for the 49ers now. Over the middle, rifles it in and a catch and a first down or close to it for Derek Washington. I feel a little shy when he slid down there. That is going to be the end of the first quarter here. Fresno State opens their conference action. They lead 14 0 here over Long Beach State, end of the first quarter. a great change of pace from Chips and Nuts. Slim Jim and these new canisters. In the snack section of your supermarket. Give that man a Slim Jim. The fight you need is treat. Hey, give yourself a Slim Jim. So good to eat. You build a house with wood and nails, but a home, a home you build with love. Soon the Hansons will raise their children here. The pictures of them up on these walls. You see their oldest coming down these stairs, going on her first stage. That's why only one paint will ever be good enough for this home. Benjamin Moore. They wouldn't use anything less. Not on something that means this much. Would you? When something means so much, see your Benjamin Moore dealer. Two in. Two great college football coaches come together for another great game. Barry, I think we should punch. No, let's go for it. Enjoy the thrill of real college football action. Oh, it's your bowl, Johnson. With the VCR College Bowl game. Punt. Go for a field goal. Score the winning touchdown. You can do it all. Look for VCR College Bowl football wherever games are sold. You don't have to be a football great. To play, great. Pretty shot. Sunset in the San Joaquin Valley as they come back into Bulldog Stadium. Long Beach State ended the first quarter getting their first first down of the game. First and ten. 49ers. Pitch goes outside and great speed on the outside. Michael Roberts. He's the tailback and he's got some quick. He's 4-4 in the 40 and zips upfield for a good game there on the pitch out. Fred Wilson. Balky, did you know that Channel 30, Action News, is the Valley's number one news program? And did you know that Jeopardy at 6.30, Wheel of Fortune at 7, and High Rollers at 7.30 are the Valley's number one game shows? And did you know that Perfect Strangers is the highest rated show Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock? Well, of course I did. Don't be ridiculous. Everyone knows that Action News and Channel 30 are number one. And I love Nancy Osborne. Perfect Strangers, Wednesday night at 8 on Channel 30. Community College, where he transferred from. We've got Jim Sweeney coming out on the field, yelling at his defense. Now, he's uh, threatened his team a little bit. If they don't win tonight, they may be practicing tonight <laughs> late after this game. What did he say? He was calling it the or else factor. <laughs> the or else. Win or else, you'll die. <laughs> Jeff Graham, second and six. The 49ers have something going there at the Dogs' 35 yard line. Hit down by the end. Going into the corner with Roberts. And I mean, coming up quick is that three year letterman, Rod Webster, number 19. And a little bit of a thank you from Jim Sweeney. He said, way to come up, way to listen. They ran this play twice in a row now. You remember Webster made that big hit the first time. This time he anticipates it even a little quicker. Watch him come up through the gap, and he's right there and just smashes Roberts. I mean, that's why he's all PCAA. And he also has uh, 12 career interceptions, so he can play both the run and the pass. 
This is third down and six for Long Beach. They are one of four in third down conversions. Graham looking to throw, trying to scramble. Down he goes, back around midfield, and the dogs warm him. Jeff Rose finds him again. That's him. 19 and a half last year. That makes five and a half already this season. Frank O'Tane, 57, was also in there. Watch Jeff Rowe Franklin, 67. He comes from the inside, which is a tough position. He wants to get double team, but he just keeps coming. That was actually a coverage sack. They forced him to scramble. Willie Lujan pumps it away on fourth down and 17. Fresno State will take over the football. First and 10 inside their 15-yard line when we come back to Fresno. Avoid the noise. With the Domino's Pizza Guarantee. We guarantee your pizza will be delivered within 30 minutes or you get $3 off your order. Guaranteed. And we guarantee your pizza will taste great. If you're not satisfied with your pizza, we'll replace it or refund your money. Only our pizza is guaranteed to avoid the noise. Domino's Pizza delivers. Now call now. Before you buy insurance, examine the evidence. A one company agent can only offer you the policies his company sells. But independent agents represent several companies. They can offer you the right policy at the right price because they have more policies to choose from. A one company agent or an independent agent? The evidence is clear. Look for the symbol of your independent agent in the yellow pages. You're more than one company agent. Welcome back to Fresno State University. Tonight's ESPN college football game is brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To arrange a thorough test drive, simply phone your nearest BMW dealer. And by Gillette Atra, the original pivoting cartridge racer, only from Gillette. There's some of the Red Wave fans welcoming you to Fresno, California. Glad you're with us tonight on ESPN. Chris Lincoln along with Stan White. We're underway in the second quarter. The Bulldogs in the red lead 14-0 over Long Beach State. The quarterback, Dave Telford, 4 of 6, 71 yards throwing the football. This has been the workhorse skipper and all. He gets met in a hurry by the center of the Long Beach State defense. That's Nate Deaton, number 74, the nose guard, 6 foot, 270 pounds. Well, their offense gave them a little bit of a rest. You know, they kept the football, let them go over the sidelines, catch their breath. Remember, they scored the last touchdown. We said they were in the end zone, sucking for air. At least this time, the offense kept the ball, put a drive together, and let them get themselves back together physically. Sideline shot there, the Long Beach State bench, as their offense talking things over on the sidelines. Dave Telford brings Fresno State up on a second and ten. The reverse goes to Anthony Williams again at the 15, at the 20. Williams dies for the 24, and will be close to a first down. Philip Morrison, number 43, the outside linebacker on the hit for the 49ers. Same type of play they scored the touchdown on earlier. And same guy running the football. They bring him in for a purpose. Uh, they have to keep their eye when he comes in the game. This time the quarterback just gives him off the play action. It was there. There was no double handoff. Different type of reverse. And Sweeney said he was going to open it up. And he sure has. He's going to he's liable to do anything. It is a first down for Fresno State at their 24-yard line. Pitch goes back to Griffin, who's in the football game now at tailback. That's the freshman, Courtney Griffin. A local player from Fresno's Central High School. It's important right now for somebody from Long Beach to make a play to stop this drive. They need to get off the field. Again, they got a little bit of a rest, but they need to get off and give the offense a chance. Now they're throwing the ball to do something because, uh, as I said in the pregame show, they're not going to be able to run the ball against Fresno's Bulldog defense at eight men up front. If they can throw it effectively, though, they can do something. They can get back in the game. Second down and six for Fresno. And off again, the freshman from Fresno at the 35, struggles up to the 40, and a first down. Courtney Griffin. 
He's Fresno's prep triple jump champion. Triple jump 47 feet, 11 and a half inches at Central High School here and making a name for himself now on the varsity football team for the Bulldogs. Courtney Griffin. I tell you what, Fresno State is served right the football. All the problems they've had, we said UCLA a minus 26 yards on the ground. Uh, finding uh, this defense a little bit more favorable to the ground attack. First and ten, Fresno State at their 40-yard line. Telford puts it on his hip. Now fires down the field and got to be a flag. Yeah, got to be. Comes. <laughs> got to be. I want to tell you, poor Craig Jones got his arms locked, and he was hoping that it wasn't that good a pass that was going to hit him right in the eyes. Yeah, he should have made the interception. He was closing on the ball, and uh, watch him right here. Watch Mark Torville come in there. He should have made, if he would have just been in the right situation to cut behind the tight end, he had a great uh, uh, read on the ball and break on the ball, but he got tangled up with the receiver when he when the tight end slowed down to come back to the football and end up interference instead of an interception. Mark Torville's got that football breeding. His dad, Charlie, was a halfback on Oregon's. Automatic first down. Here's the call. Dad, Charlie, was a halfback on Oregon's 1958 Rose Bowl team. So it is an automatic first down as they step off the penalty. It takes it over the 50 to Long Beach State's 48-yard line. Yeah, speaking of first downs, 10 for Fresno, 1 for Long Beach. Telford split backs behind him. Blitz is on. They beat the blitz with a drop play up the middle as it was Adrian Cooks, number 30. The fullback was spun in there. Well, they almost have to blitz, uh, Chris. As we said, somebody's got to make a play. They might as well start gambling now. If they just sit back and try to take them on man-to-man, -man, uh, they aren't going to be able to compete. But, uh, again, we talked about all the safety blitzes. Watch. They just hit the hole. They didn't have to block right there. They took themselves completely out of the play. Both guys went to the outside and opened up the complete middle. Hey, correct myself there. Ron Sims, number 20. Ball carry in for the first time tonight. Second down and seven. Gain of three on the play. Make the handoff, Telford. Overthrows his man. They're on different pages. Brock Smith, number two, cut out, and Telford thought he was going to do a little stop and go, and didn't work for him. Telford now, four of eight, 71 yards. As Brock Smith will come back and have a little discussion here. Well, I think we're going to see a lot of blitzing. It looks like they've uh, all of a sudden changed their defensive game plan. They came with the uh, strong safety blitz that time also, which forced uh, Telford to throw the ball a little quicker than he would like to. Fresno State's got a third and seventh. They've been two of three on third down conversions. Blitz is on and throwing it a little low, a little short. Ron Jenkins, the intended receiver. Telford got that pressure coming up the middle as you figured, Stan, and I load a little sooner. The man was open. Yeah, they are going to blitz and blitz and blitz. As we said, there's uh, nothing to stay back for. They're already down two touchdowns and haven't been able to stop Fresno by just sitting there. They might as well come after him and take the risk. It's worked on that drive. Dave will be Lane McCarthy, 13, as Belli will hit the ball at about his 45-yard line. Ryan Bonney lets it go. It sails out of bounds. Let's see what they're going to mark it. Oh, right around the one-yard line. Oh, what a punt by Belli. Knocks it out in the coffin corner. 11.03 left in the half, and it's all Fresno State. People are really going to feel the cold this winter. So add an extra layer of Owens Corning pink insulation. Owens Corning, we put your house in the pink. Junction Boulevard backed up five, six blocks for rubbernecking delays. The traffic backed out about halfway to the interchange southbound and it's stop and go. Contrary to popular belief, there are millions of miles of roads totally unfettered by traffic. And one car that will inspire you to get up earlier to find them. The new BMW 335i. With 39% more power than its predecessor, it has the singular ability to bring a whole new meaning to the expression. Rush hour. And it's stop and go northbound all the way. The Great American Face. Rugged. Distinctive. The Great American Razor. Atra. Solid. Pivots for closeness. The Great American Face deserves the Great American Shave. Atra. Only from Gillette.
October on ESPN. Part of the hottest fall ever. College football hooked up with live Saturday doubleheaders. Sizzling Grand Prix and IndyCar excitement. And horsepower of another kind sets a blistering pace between top thoroughbreds. Golf's back. Sports the fairways in the Nabisco Championship. There's fire on ice as the National Hockey League season begins. And Sunday, don't miss television's ultimate highlight show, NFL Primetime. The hottest fall of sports ever in October on ESPN. Barry Belli, the great field goal kicker for Fresno State, has just punted the ball 44 yards to the one-yard line out of bounds, which backs Long Beach State up again. There you see his uh, kicking ability in his career statistics, but uh, right now Long Beach just wants to kick out their own end zone. Jeff Graham's got a 99-yard drive in front of him. He wants to try to get his 49ers uh, on the scoreboard here. And throwing the ball from there is just as easy as you're trying to run it out because you're going to have eight men up front. You might as well try to air it out and go long. You look at where they started their drives, their own 10 twice in a row, then their own 35, their own 23, and now their own one. And that, that makes it tough. That'll delay there while they mark the chains and breaking through on the right side. Coming back now is Michael Robertson pulled down near the 10-yard line. Nice run by the little guy, 5'10". 170 pound junior mentioned as great speed came out of poly high down in long beach 4-4 in the 40. tell you what they're breathing a lot easier over here on this side of the field of long beach to get out of that own end zone on that play they haven't run that well all night to get out of there that easily uh, i'm sure fresno is disappointed on the defensive side look back behind jeff graham as they kept over now roberts and shelton Split left, Lanker right as Graham goes inside the fullback. Shelton, he stumbles over a man in the backfield, falls forward, but should have enough for close to the first down. Again, Franklin shows he can play the, uh, uh, the run as well as the pass. And Fresno's just challenging him. They're just coming after him. Well, he just goes right over the blocker, forces him to cut back, and when he cuts, he trips. They're just challenging. They're going man to man on the corners and saying, hey, you think you can complete it? Try. They're just shy of the first down when they mark it. Third and less than a yard now for Long Beach State. And they're going to throw for it. And Graham is in trouble, and Johnny goes back at the two yard line. Well, how about that? Third and short. <laughs> they changed up. They were looking for that man-to-man -man coverage. They seen this time they got a double team on the man he wanted to go to. And Tracy Rogers, who earlier had forced a pass with his blitz, this time comes up with the sack. And he's got a punt from his own end line. Not only, not only his own end zone. Boy, that hurt is Luhan. Back at the back line. Pushes on it. Oh, out of the hole he got it off. Partially deflected, the official said. That's why there's no call against the rusher. The fair catch is made at the 35-yard line of Long Beach State by Anthony Williams. Well, Lujan was lucky just to get that one off, Stan. I don't know how he got it out of there. I don't know how he missed the block, but uh, I don't know how the referee says that he got a piece of it. <laughs> Usually, if you miss it, you miss it completely. I think he just assumed that he had to hit the ball. But it didn't look like it changed direction at all as it came off his foot. It looked like it had all the velocity you expect out of a punt. But uh, the referee was right on top of it. I guess it just might have been a foul tip that time. <laughs> First and ten. Dogs, great field position, the 35-yard line. Hand off, move back to the 30, the 25. Down to the 24-yard line is that freshman from Fresno Central, Courtney Griffin. He's giving Kelly Skipper a little bit of rest at that halfback spot. And Griffin has looked good so far. A rest is what uh, Long Beach needs. Now they have to come right back in again. Three plays and out for the offense uh, of Long Beach. That defense is worn down. As you said, they're just going to have to start blitzing and gambling and hope they hit the right holes. Griffin, three carries, 27. He's out. Kelly Skipper is back in. Go to the fullback this time inside. Dean Collins and Collins. Is rolled out of there before he has a chance to get across the line of scrimmage. Philip Morrison, 43, leading the way for the 49ers. Well, second down and 10. I would expect uh, uh, at least one defensive back, if not two, coming for uh, Long Beach on this way. They'd like to keep him out of field goal range, do something to back him up. Philip well, Morrison sets his defense. As Dave Telford has a second down and 11 
from the 25-yard line. The blitz, here it comes. A pitch going around the streets is Griffin. Griffin as the flag flies as Bulldog out of bounds at the 22. Tom Keynes, number one, the man was over there to make the tackle. And a flag was thrown right on the 25. As late as that flag was, you'd think it would be holding. That's, that's what it is. It is holding. Uh, at first, it looked like he may have jumped offside, but the flag was real late. Unless Sweeney talked him into the offside, you knew it had to be holding. Eight minutes, nine seconds left in the first half. Fresno State leads 14 to nothing over Long Beach State. One thing about that blitz, though. Holding on the offense. During the run, repeat second down. You end up with man-to-man -man coverage, and that lends to a lot of big plays. Big play here, 21 to nothing. Uh, would put their backs way against the wall, if not to put it out of reach. Larry Reisvig looking for some answers from his coaches upstairs here. Trying to hold Fresno State off the board. That penalty helps. Second down and 20. Nice big talking to his quarterback, Jeff Graham, over on the sideline, ready for him to get the offense back on the field. Pitch back, the reverse comes back. Pass. Looking to throw downfield is incomplete. It was Ron Jenkins, number six, looking downfield for the split end. Brock Smith, number two. <laughs> Jenkins really makes a lot of things happen in the backfield. Well, he does. That's the third uh, pass that he's thrown this year off of that play, the end-around pass. When they want to run the end-around, they put Anthony Williams in, let him run the football. Jenkins, then they throw the pass off of that play. Uh, he's one for three now with one interception and eight yards on the one completion that he had throwing that end-around pass. Tim Brando back at the uh, studio. I have a live interview with Tim Brown, a feature of Mike Archer, the LSU coach. Uh, first half analysis of our Fresno State Long Beach State game as we come back to Tim Brando at halftime. Third down and 20, and flags fly again with 8.01 left. Had to pass on to Tim Brando some hellos from his friends in Shreveport. Their last weekend for the Super Derby on ESPN, and Tim is well remembered there by his friends in Shreveport, Louisiana. Good ball. Delay. Offense. Third down. Things like this get Jim Sweeney crazy. <laughs> no, uh, he's not, even though he's leading 14 to nothing, he's the type of coach that never has enough points to feel comfortable. He's not like Red Auerbach with a victory cigar. I think he'd have to wait till the game was over to smoke it. Might as well stay getting some penalty yardage now. Audibling right now. Now they're coming out of the blitz. Third down and 25. Dalbert looking for his tight end and is knocked away, intended for 87. Craig Jones, Philip Morrison, 43 again. This guy is everywhere. That was good uh, defensive maneuvering by Long Beach. They came up and showed blitz. They forced uh, uh, Telford to audible, and then they came out of it. And once you audible into a blitz pass, you get zoned. It's tough to get the ball in there. Well, those penalties uh, also took away Belli's opportunity for a field goal attempt as they now face fourth down and 25. So... Long Beach State gets a break with some of the penalties. It's a good defensive play. Nice high spiral by Belli and hit on the corner. And it went into the end zone for the touchback. It is a touchback. Oh, Long Beach State fans can breathe easier. The 49ers, when we come back, will take the ball on the 20. 7.51 left in the half. Someone once said that the only time a BMW owner willingly removes his car from the road is to remove the road from his car. The new BMW 325iS adds new meaning to that piece of insight. A 39% increase in power, competition tuned suspension, serious aerodynamics, all of which tends to reduce washing BMW 325iS to an act of futility. We're not a company, but outstanding people come to us every day. People who want to make a contribution to a team and do work that really counts. People eager to see new places, do the unusual, and find the unusual. People who become your friends for life. People just like you. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, the Army. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Back at Fresno State University. As you see, Fresno State leading it here 14 to nothing, and the reason is they've had the ball for a lot longer time. 
a lot of times that. time that's a misleading uh, statistic, but uh, not this time. It tells the story. Jeff Graham, the quarterback, had something going his last drive. See if he can get it going again here. Graham steps up and now runs out of time. Good coverage downfield. 54 freshman Ron Cox. He's another local player from Fresno's Washington Union High School. Another sack. You know, they had 10 sacks against UCLA last week. They had 70 sacks last year. That's 19 so far this year, but 70 last year in 11 games. The NFL record for 16 games is only 72 by the Chicago Bears in 1985. Long Beach State has 16 yards rushing, 39 passing so far in this first half. Second and 12, Jeff Graham running for his life, throws, and that play had no chance. Lafayette Shelton got a safety valve, but all over him out there was the over James Rivera. That's one thing about this defense, eight men up. If you get ahead of people, boy, you can just let loose and fly after the ball, and that's what they're doing. Uh, they even gave Jethro Franklin a little break on this uh, uh, on this drive. They got him out of there. Got some new people in the game. Now he's back in the game. Franklin, I uh, guess third down. He says, "I'm going to get me a sack." <laughs> he's tired of seeing his buddies get it. Third down and 12 now. Keep in mind, Long Beach State has to get to the 30 for a first down here. 7:05 left in the half. Long Beach State trails. Fresno 14 nothing in game, running for his life again. At the 20, at the 25, and he will be short of the first down as he's run out about the 27-yard line. John O'Leary, number 80, and Chuck McCutcheon, number 90, were in the vicinity to force him out of there. Another three-play and-out drive, and we've talked about how tired and how beat up that defense is of Long Beach State. Now they've got to go right back in the game again. Fourth down and three, Willie Lujan. It's a nice high spiral. Fair catch is called for and taken right at the 34-yard line by number three, Anthony Williams. Well, if you just join us, let's catch you up on the storyline for this matchup here tonight with 6.50 left in the first half. Stan? We talked about they had to be able to protect their quarterback to get some of those short passes off. They can't even get short passes off. Three sacks doesn't even tell the pressure that they've uh, put on Jeff Graham, and that's where it's being won by Fresno State up front to both offensively and defensively. And on the offensive side, Telford needs to pass well, and he's passed certainly well enough right now to get him a 14-point lead. Telford from his 34. Hands off to Sims. This is Ron Sims. Senior running back from Miami, Florida. It's the third fullback that Jim Sweeney has used tonight. Nate Deaton, the nose guard, made the hit. And uh, it's obviously the fact that we hit on at the start of the game, Stan. And Jim Sweeney knew it, too. He's playing as many people as he can in this first half here because he is really wearing down Long Beach State that has had that well, their third road game in 13 days. Can you imagine if it had been a day game? <laughs> they, they had been over before they started. Here's that cheated backfield again. Watch that same play. Fullback coming out. There he is. Telford looking for him, and he has it. That was Sims who slipped out of the backfield from his fullback position. Made the catch. Couldn't quite keep his feet there. And just short of a first down. Yeah, you, can, look. you can tell. You see the fullback seated up in front of the halfback. That's so he can sneak out of the out of the uh, backfield. You see him coming right through there. Nobody picks him up. It's been open all night long. It's an easy catch by Sims. John McMaster, 48, was the man who came over to make the play for Long Beach. Good play. He said, kept away from the first down. Third down and one. Telford, high backfield behind him. Goes to the tailback, Skipper, and he has the first down easily as he dances to the left and right there and moves it out to the 48-yard line for a first down. Lane McCarthy, number 13, got off to the strong safety spot to make that play. Whenever they've needed uh, some yardage, they go this off-tackle play. You watch this, he goes down and watch the guard for around. He tries to submarine in there, but they're just moving people out. It's, uh, you can tell they're tough, and that's hard-nosed football, that off-tackle play. That, that'll test you right there, whether you're physically ready or not. Gary Walden, the junior, 68, was the pulling guard on the play. Just Skidmore, the sophomore, sealed him off. Pass complete at the 40-yard line. 
and roll on him out to 35 for the first down. It goes to Ron Jenkins, number six, and a nice throw by Telford. 17 yards on the play. Good call. They saw the blitz coming. They kept in the tight end, then both backs, and just picked it up and had a single coverage. And you can't cover that pattern on a blitz coverage. You just have to give it to him. That's the toughest throw to make is the out pattern. And he was up to it. Telford made a good throw. There's the big bulldog looking on here. Fresno State, they are proud of their football team. The whole community is really behind this squad. Head off inside, that is Skipper, breaks the tackle, and Skipper goes across the 30, inside the 28-yard line. But tough, tough man to tackle. That's the running play off that pass we've seen. Instead of uh, taking it out of his belly, he gave it to Skipper on the cross buck, and uh, you can see the guard pulling behind right here. Watch him, it's a tackle, really. It's actually a tackle trap coming from the backside. Again, though, they miss a tackle in the backfield, and you have to think that uh, a lot of that is just uh, from being wore down. Dave yeah. Riley, the sophomore, number 94, outside linebacker, finally made the tackle on Skipper. Jenkins Smith is split wide. They throw in the backfield. This is Skipper, and Skipper is going to be wrestled down. Fine defensive play by number 54, Tim Witherspoon, the outside linebacker. He's on the other side of Morrison. Made a big play for the 49ers. Well, he sure did. Uh, you'd think on second down and short yards, they would uh, run the football, the success they had. But the, you see that, that lineman never even saw Witherspoon behind him. He could have turned around and just kept him from coming down the pursuit. They'd have had something going. Somebody's always got a seal back on the inside on those little quick screens. Telford now faces the 39. They need the 25 for a first down. Blitz is off. Picked up nicely. Pumping as Telford looking down into the end zone. It is incomplete. Stacey Alexander, good coverage. He didn't turn to look for the football and lose the receiver. He stayed with him, and he went for the football. He tried to strip him. That's just good coverage on the blitz. It was Jenkins, the intended receiver in the end zone. So it's fourth down and nine with 3.33 left in the first half. When you get caught in that type of situation, you cannot turn to look for the football. When you have good position defensively, then you can turn and go for the in, uh, interception. But when you're in a, that precarious situation where maybe a touchdown, you just have to try to keep it from catching it. 50 yard field goal for Barry Belli, one of the best in the nation. Belli has it on the way, and it is wide to the right side. Belli, who was three of five, or excuse me, five of seven on field goals, coming in is wide right from 50 yards out. So the score remains the same. The Bulldogs up 14-0. 3.29 left in the first half. We'll take a break from Fresno. BMWs have always been engineered to provide a heightened awareness of the road. Now there's one that also provides a heightened awareness of everything about the road. Introducing the BMW 325i Convertible. Look, here he comes. Party animal. His name is Buzz McKenzie. Buzz McKenzie. A real hot night and a cold Buzz life. Put him in a party frenzy. He's Buzz McKenzie, but like the original party animal. That says he is the party the ghost boys go! You can see the total yardage there again. Talk about stats that tell the story. Fresno State, 208 yards to Long Beach State's 52. That makes the score 14 to nothing. You can realize why they're leading this game, and it could be more. Jeff Graham has his 49ers ready to go from their own 34-yard line. They've only been, I believe, across midfield one time so far in the first half. Michael Roberts finds the hole and dances up near the 40-yard line. You know, Barry Belli is a great kicker, but he hasn't had that good a success outside of 50 yards, which that last kick was. He's only 3 for 12 in his career uh, from outside 50. Now, you just look at that inside 40. He'd only missed 4 in his career coming into this season. 
Tyrone McCullough goes flanking to the right side. They split the left, and now they go straight up the middle to Michael Roberts again. A pretty good lick at the 170 pounder. Yeah, Jay Wilkerson hit, <laughs> hit him face up. That's putting the helmet right between the shoulder pads. He's the guy that's moving to inside linebacker for the first time, uh, forcing John O'Leary, their leading tackler, out of the lineup. Uh, Jim Sweeney felt he's been getting down too many times. You can't get cut down as a linebacker and do your job. Third down and two. Driving into the middle there again is Michael Roberts off the right side. Looking for the first down mark, which would be the 44-yard line. That defensive Long Beach is saying, please be a first down. <laughs> we need a few more plays to rest, but to me, it looks like it's a good uh, uh, two feet short, if not a yard. Here comes the punting team again. Willie Lujan, number 18, is the punter as they scramble that team out in a hurry. Fourth down and one. They're going to kick it away with two minutes left in the first half inside their own territory. Lujan again, a nice high kick. Their catch is taken. And it will be Fresno's offense coming back to the attack when we return to Bulldog Stadium. People from all over Central California wait for our once-a-year executive demonstrator sale of Mercedes-Benz automobiles, and this is it. I can personally guarantee you will save thousands of dollars on one of these light new executive demonstrators. Some customers tell us they've shopped from Los Angeles to San Francisco to find a better deal and couldn't do it, and once again bought their Mercedes-Benz from Slavish Brothers. New or used, buy or lease, yes you can, during our annual executive demonstrator sale at Slavish Brothers Mercedes-Benz in Fresno. Hi, I'm Tom Long. Now, Long's Building Supply, low-pie wood stoves are on sale. Look over one of the largest low-pie selections in the valley and pick the model that's right for your home. Either freestanding with optional solid brass doors or insert models that feature powerful blowers. All low-pies are on sale with savings up to $160. This season, keep your family warm and save energy with low-pie. Catch him if you can. Dale Earnhardt, NASCAR's record-setting champion, is the one to beat, and only a few can do it. The race is on at the Holly Farms 400, live Sunday on ESPN. Welcome back to Fresno, and it's not a replay. We're going to have to kick this again. We had a face mask penalty. On the return by Fresno State, it was against Long Beach, so they mark off some more yardage against the 49ers and will make Duhon punt it again. And a nice high kick. Anthony Williams, number three, calls for the fair kick, picks it on the knee. Flag flies again. I'm sure they're saying that Long Beach was too close to Anthony Williams when he made the reception. Yeah, you cannot break that two-yard plane. I mean, before the ball's there or after it's there, once you get inside that on a punt return, you're going to get five yards. And the penalty is against Long Beach State. Reminder, we'll be uh, joining Sports Center with Tim Brando coming up at halftime. Some special features for you. An interference on the kicking team. Violated the two-yard zone. Five-yard penalty. First down. See, those rules, too. <laughs> See right there, he can't get within two yards of him. Right there, he's inside two yards, little halo, little circle around him. Come on, he tried to get out of the way. Well, you can't try, <laughs> you got to do it. Yeah. Oh. It's not intent here, it's just whether you do it or not. And he didn't drop the ball, there's no harm. <laughs> no harm, no ball. That's right. Wrong, league, wrong league. I guess right. That's play. <laughs> Dave Telford. Brings the dogs up in the minute. 46 left in the half and a first down. Fresno at their 37. Telford looking downfield. Tight end over the middle. 40, 43 yard line and bumped down there. It was Craig Jones, 87. The junior tight end from uh, San Jose. He just delayed and came out late and they got the six, seven yards there. Just going into a two minute drill. No huddle. Donald Boone right at the line. Hurry up offense now for the dogs. Second down and three. Throws outside the ball. That's taken there by Brock Smith, number two, to split in. Steps out to kill the clock. And Fresno State showing off their two-minute offense. Jim Sweeney has a few uh, fine points there he wanted to pass on. 
<laughs> Hutchler got the shades on, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, he knows he's on television. It's <laughs> good on television. Even at night, he's going to wear shades, huh? First and 10, 47 yard line. Minute 18 left in the first half. Fresno State in their home red leading 14 0. Calvert, plenty of time. Down the left sideline looking for Williams. Intercepted. Good tell who had it for a Mark Corville stole it away, 26. Good play by the free safety Mark Corville. Six foot, 175, the sophomore. Well, this is the uh, prototype free safety play, the one you think the guy's got to make coming all the way across the field, leaping up and taking the ball away from the receiver. Watch this good jump, good timing. Great catch, and he kept keeps it, gets one foot down. The second was on the line, but of course, in college, you only need that one foot. It's his first interception of the year. Good shot on Mark with a minute 11 left. Let's see how they play it here as the 49 offense comes up. There you go, Mark. It's a wave on camera. Graham Ibax behind him. Up the middle it goes, looking at Shelton, the full back, and Long Beach State looks like they don't want to take any chances here with a foolish turnover to set up any easy scores. Tracy Rogers, 45. Strong linebacker. Well, I guarantee you, if uh, Fresno had more than one timeout left, they'd be calling him now. There's Corville, who made the uh, big interception. Like another high mom. A lot of high moms again. Huh? What about his dad? His dad played on the Rose Bowl That's team. That's right. Well, again, come on. Hi, Dad. Give him a break. Say hi, Dad. Second down and eight. Graham again just hands off the top of the eye. Michael Robinson. Long Beach State is content to just let this run out. Fresno's not. <laughs> they called their final timeout. Remember, they wasted a couple on some uh, uh, extra point plays and so forth. If they'd have had them all up, I'm sure they'd have called it a little bit earlier. But now, obviously, the ball will, will uh, the clock will stop on change of possession in case Sam Weiss is listening. He'll, he'll uh, be able to use gotta, that next game. Got to tell the story. With Jim Sweeney <laughs> and his older son. It's a great story there. Stan? Yeah, well, his older son is the uh, recruiting coordinator for the University of Washington. And he was trying to recruit Kevin as well as his dad was trying to recruit Kevin. Uh, Jim was a great quarterback at Alabama. Right. Went there to play. And uh, he brought that up to his dad. And he said, Dad, uh, uh, the dad that I had, the loving dad that I had, let his son go wherever he wanted to go. And uh, Jim Sr. said to Jim Jr., yeah, but you didn't throw as well as Kevin did. <laughs> and he made the right choice as far as Jim Sweeney is concerned because he came to Fresno and just uh, rewrote the record book. 10,600 yards plus. They just retired uh, his jersey number nine here at Fresno State University. And now Kevin Sweeney is getting another opportunity with all the strike problems to try in the NFL again. The Dallas Cowboys made their last cut. He's now back in the camp there. Getting ready for Sunday. And breaking through on the left side is Michael Robinson. Got some great speed of 30, 35, 40, 45. Run out of bounds near midfield with 19 seconds left on the clock. So Michael Roberts, the 4-4 man in the 40, finally breaks one outside. Tony Harris, the free safety number four, had the angle and cut him out with 19 seconds left in the first half. Well, you call those timeouts sometimes it backfires on you. They come up with a big play. Now they're wishing it they would let the clock run out because they can let Long Beach back into the game. Long Beach needs a field goal out of this. It would really put their spirits going into halftime. You know, they got to be wondering, do we have enough left in us to play, even play the second half? Now, you get a score, it's a lot easier to get ready to play the second half. Remember Tim Brando standing by with our halftime report. Talking to Notre Dame's Tim Brown. Feature on Mike Archer, the LSU football coach. And a of our halftime action here. Timeout has been called now by Jeff Graham as he wants to come over and talk things over the Long Beach State coaching staff. Well, they wasted that one. They just, the uh, 25 second clock was winding down to zero. He had to call it. Let's go back and take another look at Mike Roberts' run, number three for Long Beach State. Here he is, the top of the eye. And this is the eye formation, the classic eye cutback. Watch it, no hole there, but over pursuit right there. The linebacker knocked down, makes a good move. And when you're the backside linebacker, you saw the guy that got cut down, you have to stay behind the ball carrier. That's your responsibility. And if you don't, that's what's going to happen right there. Nice block by uh, Derek Jinks, the left guard, 55 downfield. You saw Derek Washington, 17. 
also throw a nice block there. Our coach Reisbeck made no secret of the fact, and you're not going to hide it, that he has a very young football team, Stan. They're not going to try to do a lot of things fancy. They've got to have some patience with their kids. But uh, in his first year as head coach, with having to raise the funds again to keep the program going, he lost the entire month of December uh, recruiting. And, of course, that's crucial out here with junior college signings. So he's really uh, started behind and trying to catch up here with this Long Beach State program. Jeff Graham's got catch up on his mind as he looks deep down the right side and overthrows the intended receiver, Derek Washington. Fred Wilbur, number eight, the right cornerback, is back there in that single coverage. 13 seconds left in the half. Well, he had him. He had him by a step or two, but again, it would have taken a perfect pass, one thrown well before uh, he had a chance to see him break open. And that's one of those that you just hope you can connect with. And that time he didn't, but. Uh, uh, he'll come back to that again. You'll see that sometime during the game because he had him beat. Jeff Graham is real tough on himself in the Michigan game. His teammates all said, you know, gosh, the, the guy didn't have any practice time. He got hurt against Cal State. Fulton was on crutches the end of that game. Didn't practice all week. Went up and played most of the game at Michigan. And still trying to get things sorted out here as they have taken their last time out with 13 seconds left. Jeff Graham wants to be real sure of what Coach Weisberg and the offensive staff have in mind as he comes over to the sidelines to talk it over. Reminder again, we've got a lot of college football action coming up for you this week, starting it off tonight and Saturday. A football doubleheader starts at 4 o'clock Eastern with the Gamecocks of South Carolina going to Lincoln, Nebraska to take on the second-ranked Huskers, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 Pacific time. Following that, 7.30 Eastern, that's 4.30 out here on the coast. It's the Gators of Florida, 18th ranked against the LSU Tigers, number eight, Tiger Stadium. Stan is still shaking his head about the Buckeyes being tied there. <laughs> sure, I'm shaking my head about them having to use two timeouts because they didn't get to play in quick enough, and the 25-second clock was winding down. If they catch the ball in bounds now, the, play, the uh, time's going to run out. They'll stop it for the uh, move the markers, but they still may not have a chance to get a playoff. Wasted two timeouts in a row. Second down, 10. Jeff Graham with a clock at 10 seconds. At 9, he throws it at 8 seconds down the sideline. It is caught for a touchdown by Mark Say. Number 80, the reserve flanker with 4 seconds left on the clock. And oh, did Long Beach need that to celebrate for the 49ers? Jim Sweeney is saying over there, why did I call that timeout? <laughs> Had this game in command, now I let him right back in it. He scrambles, watch, he just throws it up. It's another one of those, just throw it and hope it lands in the right spot. And it landed in the perfect spot right in his hand. You see, he's got a team, just a perfect throw down the sideline. He gets in the end zone. Tell you what, uh, that's going to really lift their spirits, and they need them lifted. The extra point is good. Brings it in a score. That's going to really lift their spirits going into the halftime. Amazing. Dave Van Steenkiss hits the extra point. It was a 48-yard touchdown pass play. And what a big play for the 49ers. That's going to make this second half a lot more interesting, so you don't go away because we got a football game, and I think Fresno State realizes now they made a little tactical error there, giving them another chance to put some points on the board. They took advantage of it. 49ers <laughs> celebrating on the sideline. That is a big turnaround. You never realize so many games are won and lost in the last two minutes of the first half and the last two minutes of the game. We have that Mark Say, I believe that is his first catch of the season. I'd say it was a, a good start, a good first catch. He's going to be talking about his average now, right? On national television, a uh, good time to have your first catch and a long touchdown with four seconds left in the half. What a big drive that was for the 49ers. Four seconds left to play. Pickoff by Van Steen Pistons. Picked up by the short man as the first half runs out. Long Beach comes back 94 yards in five plays as they have cut the lead in half at halftime at Bulldog Stadium in Fresno. It's Fresno State University 14, Long Beach State University 7th. 
And let's go to Tim Brando in the studio now with our halftime report. All right, Chris Lincoln, thank you very much. Coming up at halftime, we'll go live to Notre Dame to talk with Heisman frontrunner Tim Brown, plus a look at this Saturday CFA doubleheader on ESPN, then a quick update on day 10 of the NFL player strike, and finally, the story with the pennant races as the Cardinals look to close out the National League East and the Tigers hope to move to within a game of Toronto in the American League East. All of that is ahead next on the Coca-Cola Classic Halftime Report. The 49ers trail the Bulldogs 14-7 at halftime. You ever heard of race car drivers running with a family car oil? They do. Winners like Jeff and Brent Codine, Tim Richmond, and Daryl Waltrip. They use the same new Superflow 10W30 motor oil you can buy in stores. It has a special additive wear band that's super at block and wear. Right, guys? Right! Good catch! You play football! No! Too dangerous! Want your engine to last? Go with the flow. New Super Flow. Burger King has something new for breakfast. Have a new bagel. Have a new bagel. Have a new bagel at Burger King. Introducing the Bagel Sandwich, a big bagel with fresh eggs, cheese, and your choice of bacon, sausage, or ham. Have a new bagel. Have a new bagel. The new Bagel Sandwich, a big breakfast now at Burger King. The best food for fast times. Quick angles, the Rawlings level. On the field, it's real important that I run my pass routes at precise angles. But at home, Rawlings helps me to find the precise angles. It's a two-foot level, a four-foot level, a square, a miter, an angle finder, and a whole lot more for the professional or a handyman. On the field, it's green and white for me. Off the field, it's Rawlings yellow. Join the Rawlings team. Call 1-800-367-9623 for the dealer nearest you. To create new worlds, you need to see in new ways. Be curious. Look at the problem from another direction. Commit yourself to the long term. Keep your mind open. Look for breakthrough ideas. From aerospace to healthcare, we're creating new worlds by seeing in new ways. BASF, the spirit of innovation. The Thursday Night College Football Halftime Report is brought to you by Coca-Cola Company and your local Coca-Cola bottler of Coca-Cola Classic. We start the evening with a program note. This Saturday, ESPN CFA double hitter features three of the nation's top 20 teams. We'll begin our back-to-back -back coverage from Lincoln, Nebraska, as the second-ranked Cornhuskers host South Carolina. Now, we should mention that the Gamecocks had Nebraska on the ropes last year in Columbia before losing in the closing seconds. Then at 7.30 Eastern time, it's on to the Bayou, where the 8th-ranked Fighting Tigers of LSU meet the 18th-ranked Florida Gators. This game could go a long way in determining the Southeastern Conference championship. Championship. The head coach of the LSU Tigers is Mike Archer, a Pennsylvania boy who grew up in the shadow of the Penn State campus, he even lived in the same neighborhood as Joe Paterno. After serving as an assistant coach under Bill Arnsparger, he was recommended for the head coaching vacancy by his former boss when Arnsparger left to become athletic director at Florida. While Arnsparger may have been retiring from coaching, many LSU fans weren't happy at all that the man that, that was leaving to go to another SEC school would be selecting his successor. In fact, LSU's board chose not to choose Archer until a thorough coaching search was completed. Finally, Archer was named the head coach in late December, and what had been a lifelong dream had finally become a reality. With the job comes pressure, and it could not have been more evident last week when LSU met Ohio State. Pressure. 34 and aging. That's how old Mike Archer must have felt last week against Ohio State. Though his Tigers virtually won the battle of statistics, LSU turned the ball over at critical times, forcing the nation's youngest Division I coach to make difficult decisions, the kind that open you up for second guessing from fans and alumni. But when it comes to play calling decisions, he has great conviction. You know, we're going to do things offensive in nature. We felt like we needed to score a touchdown. 
Uh, there were still over two minutes to go in the ball game. We've been in that situation in the last three years, uh, two other times, and set up for the field goal and did not make it. So we wanted to go in with the idea of scoring a touchdown. If we did not do it, we would settle, with, you know, for the field goal. It just didn't work out that way. Uh, you know, that's part of the game. We know that. Our players played very hard, and we're very proud of them, and we just have to get ready to play this week. The 34-year-old Pennsylvania native is considered aggressive by his peers and admittedly has had to make some difficult transitions from a position coach to the head job. Hold up, hold up. That's it. Now set the wall. Set the wall. Bring it to him. Look inside. What the heck was that? I was aware that you don't get to coach as much one-on-one -on -one with the players uh, like you do as an assistant coach, and I miss that. Uh, I still do it because I handle the special teams, and for my 20-minute period every day, that's what I look forward to. A former assistant to Howard Schnellenberger and Bill Arsbarger, Mike Archer says the one-on-one -on -one is what he misses most with his players. But it's the one-on-one -on -one off the field that also is very difficult and certainly a part of the job. Please, that's been new. That's been a learning situation for me because I, you have to handle one, each and every one different. And uh, I've learned from that. I've made mistakes in a lot of areas, but uh, fortunately, we've got very good coaches here. We've got an understanding administration, and we've got players who care about each other and care about our coaches because they went to bat for me and, and for these coaches last December and wanted us to be here. So they were out on a limb a little bit this summer, and, and as the season started, I have to give credit to the coaching staff. The coaching staff we have here has prepared us in such a way. You know, we, we have scouting reports that, we, that that break down. You know, with size shoe they wear. It, it gets very, very, very technical. Uh, the coaches, the coaches have done an extremely well job on technique. Archer was Bill Arnsbarger's defensive coordinator. Now Arnsbarger is the athletic director at Florida's Saturday's opponent. Opening the conference is something special to our players here at LSU, and playing Florida is something special for a number of reasons. One, it's Florida, and two, uh, you know, Coach Arnsbarger is not at the University of Florida. We will begin to prepare, particularly mentally, to play Florida, and uh, hopefully we'll be good enough to beat them. We'll have more on that matchup, and we'll even talk to Bill Arnsparger, who takes his Florida Gators in as an athletic director. Of course, Galen Hall, the head coach at Florida. We'll have more on that Saturday. And we'll also go live to Tallahassee to talk with Florida State coach Bobby Bowden. All of that on CFA Game Day, college football game day, which begins at 1130 Eastern Time Saturday morning. And in Stillwater, Oklahoma, there's a Heisman hopeful that's gone unnoticed by many. His name is Thurman Thomas. We'll have him live. All of that as Bino Cook and Gary Ross join me for college football game day at 11.30 on Saturday. Speaking of Heisman hopefuls, we've got the Heisman frontrunner joining us now live in Notre Dame, Indiana. He is Tim Brown. And Tim, thank you for taking time to join us. And you've got to be ecstatic over the way things are going, both personally as well as from a team standpoint right now. Yeah, right now things are going pretty well for us. You know, I don't think... Uh... We could really ask for anything else, and as far as for myself, you know, the, the teams are playing a lot of double coverage on me and everything, but I'm getting a little bit out of it, so uh, things are going pretty good. You know, it's not perhaps been since Johnny Rogers that we've seen a guy that has as much special team success be mentioned for the Heisman. Right now, if you were not a punt returner, you may not be uh, thought of in the same light. Yeah, I, I knew that going into the year. That's why I really wanted to, uh, to get involved in the special teams, and Coach Hills and the rest of the coaching staff has done a great job of trying ways uh, to get me the ball and, and get This football game, Fresno State leads it 14 to 7. They will receive the kickoff to start the second half of David Van Steen kiss. He kicked the extra point to bring the 49ers back within seven. And the second half is underway in this important Pacific Coast Athletic Association game. They're turning it up field to 15 to the 20 down to the 23 yard line. On the return is Brock Smith. And let's give you a look at the first half statistically. Stan? Yeah, and you got to remember 90 yards were made the last two plays of the half to bring that total yardage up to 159. Up until then, it was 69 yards of total offense. We said Fresno State dominated the first half, but everything turned around in those last two plays. And now it's a football game. Dave Telford. 
has gone all the way at quarterback tonight for Fresno. And right off the bat, he gets Ron Jenkins outside at the 36-yard line for a first down for the Bulldogs. And I'll bet you Jim Sweeney was telling them a little bit at halftime about uh, to get something happening right away. They would love to get a score here and try to get that 14-point ball back again. You say you dominate a game, you let a team back in, you give them hope. Right now, Long Beach has hope, and if they can make a play defensively, they're right back at, uh, right back at a tie game. Got it. Coach Jim Sweeney on the sideline, the winningest coach in the history of Fresno State University in his 10th season. Calvert pitches back to Kelly Skipper. Skipper cuts it back inside and rolls across the 40-yard line. Nate Deaton, 74. And linebacker Tom Kane's number one, has been in on a lot of plays this evening, makes the stop. Well, he's our leading tackler. He had 47 tackles going into this game, and he's added to that total tonight. But I'll tell you what, I like the way Kelly Skipper always gets the extra yards. He may be here to line, and he'll spin and bob and get four, three, four extra yards. Colin Skipper in the backfield behind the quarterback, Telford, on a second down and six. Big hole up in it. Hit goes Skipper. 50, 45, up to the 40, first and 10 for the Dogs. They see Alexander, number two, the right quarterback, hold him down, but not before Skipper had gotten a gain of 20 yards. Again, here's that cross buck play. The tackle trap. They see a tackle coming down the line of scrimmage, and that hole just opened up. In fact, he didn't even have to block anybody. It was so wide open. The last man made a touchdown saving tackle right there. Norville would never caught him. So the dogs are on the march with the start of the second half. Kelly Skipper on a 20-yard run, first and 10, now at the Long Beach State 40-yard line. Pitch back, bounces off Skipper. It's loose, he falls down with the football. Al Aikens, number 60, was over there to make sure of things for Long Beach State. The point, I don't believe we've had a turnover. We had the one interception by Torville right before those last two plays that happened. It didn't look like a big turnover at that point because it was like a punt. It put them back at their own 10-yard line, but uh, they got out of there quickly on the last two plays of the half. Both teams have really played pretty error-free football. Again, it's Telford. Has a man wide open at the 30 and falling down is Brock Smith and covering him very quickly. Number 26, Mark Torville. They, are, they brought the corner. Stacy Alexander came free, and Torvald had to come over from his free safety position to take the coverage. With Alexander blitzing, Delford had to throw the ball before the man even came close to turning around, but he had the great timing on it. That's what you do in practice. You have to throw that ball before he makes his cut. And that time when the receiver turned around, it was right in his chest. Williams goes to the uh, top of the screen. In the slot is Ron Jenkins, number six. And the handoff goes to Skipper, right side, 30, 25, down to the 23-yard line. Another fine gain off to the right side. Gary Walden, 68, the left guard, pulled around and lead the blocking on it. Nate Deaton, 74. And uh, Gutierrez, number five, makes the stop for the 49ers. Well, they're reasserting their uh, command of the game right now, going right down the field, and they need to get some points out of it. Conversely, uh, Long Beach needs to make a play here. Good look there, Dave Telford, their junior quarterback. Started going all the way, scrambling and double, and down he goes to 25-yard line and lose a couple. It'll set up third down. Lane McCarthy, number 13, is in there to mess things up. Strong safety blitz. We talked about how they love to blitz those defensive backs. Had three sacks already coming into this game. We talked about making a play. Well, that's one. But here's the big down. Third down, six yards to go in a somewhat questionable field goal range. Still outside 40 yards for Belli. Third down and six. They need to get to the 19 for a first down. The pitch goes outside. Kelly Skipper. Skipper loses the football. Scramble for it, I think. The 49ers are on it. Yes. Nate Deaton, 74. Scrambled over there. And here you see Big Nate celebrating. Six foot, 270. And he jumps on that football. And Jim Sweeney doesn't want to talk to anybody. Not right now. We talked about making a play. Well, this is about as big a play you can make. They didn't not only stop in the first down, but they got the football. Somebody makes a big hit right there. Right here, it comes in. I can't get the number on that. I think it's number five, like Gutierrez. Gutierrez, the linebacker, came in. He didn't start this game. He got benched, but he sure made a play that time. And then it was Nate Deaton who made the fumble recovery. So here come the 49ers. Jeff Graham has his offense out there. Split back, loses the football, scramble for it. 
It was Browning and Graham both diving for it, and the 49ers will keep it. <laughs> oh. I tell you what, there's uh, Nate Deaton on the sideline. Big recovery by him, but just as big a recovery that time by Jeff Graham. They were trying the underneath trap handoff, and he never got the ball from the center. Luckily, he just was able to fall on it and keep possession. Now it brings up second and 11. Browning and Wilson are the backs. Split to the right, flank to the left. A lot of boying right here. That's why the backs are shifting. Graham second and 11. Waiting, waiting, now in trouble, and down he goes in the arms of 57, Craig Ate. 6'3", 245, senior, out of Carmel, California, Monterey Peninsula Junior College. Big play there for that senior left in. Good defensive disguise again. Had plenty of time. They had good pickup on the blitz. You see the outside people coming right there. They got good pickup, but they had some help in the coverage, and he had nobody to throw to. So far for Fresno tonight, of Tate, Franklin, Rogers, Cox, all the sacks. If you get a good look at Craig and Tate with that last sack. Third and 18. Draw play and fool nobody. It was Brian Browning, 24, with the football. For Fresno, Chuck McCutcheon, who got a start tonight at nose guard, makes the play. So the turnover doesn't kill Fresno State, but certainly it's going to ruin the field position now. Is coming out quickly. Willie Lujan to punt it away. Lujan, nice high kick. Fair catch is called for. Taken at the 46-yard line by Anthony Williams. So the Bulldogs will take over at their 46. Their lead still 14-7 to in the third quarter. He got his pilot's license before his driver's license. He flew 325 missions in Vietnam. One ended early. He flew around the world without stopping. And today, Dick Crutan flies around in an hour. They say the car you drive says a lot about you. But we think the kind of people who drive our cars says a lot about Audi. When you're ready to follow your own road, you're ready for an Audi. College football on ESPN, Long Beach State at Fresno State is being brought to you by the 1987 German engineered Volkswagens and your Volkswagen dealers. And by Napa Auto Parts Stores. Call 1 800 Let Napa for the nearest location. Press Lake and along with Stan White welcoming you to Fresno, California. The Bulldogs in red leading the 49ers in the white 14 to 7. Flag high as Skipper. Goes through the line up to the 50-yard line. Check it. Courtney Griffin, 38. Freshman snuck back in there, but a flag was thrown in the Bulldogs' backfield. Well, yeah, well, that uh, guy that snuck back in there uh, tried to get it too quick a start, and he moved before the snap, so it's going to be five yards for illegal motion against Fresno. Illegal shift. Offense. Repeat first down. A word from Jack Cottle, the referee, and he's had about as many words tonight as Stan and I have. Yeah, he's got a lot of air time. People back home will know he was working. <laughs> Here come the dogs after the five-yard march off. First and 15. They're at their 41-yard line. Back to pass is Kelsey. Now strips it outside. It comes to Courtney Griffin, and Griffin is knocked down around the 45-yard line. Great play by Keith Jenkins. He was out to had two blockers. He cut between both blockers and made a one-arm tackle to get Griffin down. Now that was well set, well conceived screen pass, but the blockers just passed him up. He allowed him to knife through, and he held hold it to uh, holds it. <laughs> he holds it. It's <laughs> four yards. Sound like a Buckeye grab for a second. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on. Here we go. Help it. Fakes the draw, looks deep, has time, throws over the middle, and got the man at the 35 and a first down. 
The pass caught by the reliable one, Ron Jenkins, number six. He's the senior flanker. The letterman from Los Angeles, East L.A. Junior College. And he really gets the big play for him. This nice protection allows everybody to clear out underneath him. Jenkins to get deep in the hole and catch that football. He's had uh, five, five, and six catches in the three games thus far this season. He is very consistent. First and ten. Now to the 37-yard line. Long Beach. The pitch goes back to Griffin. Cuts inside the 35. Goes to the 30. 25. Head over the 20. Hurdles the man at the 15. And down to the 12. But a flag is down to the backfield. And now another flag drops. And you would think in the backfield there would be some type of hold or clip. And they're pointing back towards Fresno. So that's going to bring it all the way back. Great block by the fullback on the outside linebacker, Tim Witherspoon. I think it was Ron Sims cut him down quickly, but he may have used his arm a little bit to tackle. Another they call him a clip. And holding and clipping. Uh, the clip was downfield, oh, I guess. Yeah. The holding was at the line of scrimmage. And Jim Sweeney was haunted by penalties against UCLA. I'm sure they're going to take the one back up field, not the one downfield, the clip. They'll take the hold. They went to dominating the game, but they're through mistakes and they're not taking advantage of opportunities. They're letting Long Beach stay in it longer and longer. During the run on the offense, that penalty is declined. We have holding on the offense. That penalty is accepted. Repeat first down. Tell you, when you got a team, you got to put them away. You can't allow them to stay in the game. They say this, folks, anything can happen at the end. I'm sure Jim Sweeney's thinking about that, although he has dominated Long Beach State. Uh, they've won the last six games from the 49ers. You see why Larry Weisbeck is proud of both his 49ers, this very young football team. They do have the character he talked about, and uh, they have fought hard, stayed in this football game. Back to pass, Telford again on first and 20, man wide open at the 30. At the 25, he's going to have a first down. Brock Smith, number two, the split end, made the catch and picks up 21 yards. They needed 20. First down for Fresno. No excuse for letting that wide open, that much of a cushion by a defensive back. He was way off of it. He was letting him 10 yards on a hook pattern. That makes it too easy for the quarterback. Look how far off they are. Nobody even close to him. You've got to be able to cover people, especially on long yardage. Brock Smith tonight, number two there. Three catches for 43 yards. And Dave Telford has looked good at quarterback for Jim Sweeney. First and ten now. The Dogs at the 49er 25. Pitch back, and I don't think he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. Courtney Griffin, 38. Piled up John McMaster, 48, one of their captains for Long Beach, comes in to make the hit. I'll tell you what, everybody in the sideline right now is just praying that they score on Fresno State's sideline because of the or else dicta that, uh, dictum that uh, was put forth by Jim Sweeney. Or else means they practice every day this weekend. If they lose, if they win, they get a couple days off. And uh, that's motivation, I tell you. Telford's got the hot hand. Yeah, 14 out of 20 for 170 yards. 5 out of 5 for 69 this half. Second down, 10. Harvey shows blitz. Telford trying to roll away from it. He does at the 25. At the 20. Cuts and dives for 15. And looks like he'll have his first down. Tell you what, uh, didn't realize he was that good an athlete. We talked about how he's smart, he knows what to do. He's the guy that signaled in the uh, plays to Kevin Sweeney last year as he was redshirted. We're watching him uh, get around Philip Morrison here, who is a great athlete. He can't catch Stelford. He gets around the end, and when you blitz and you let the uh, player get outside contained, all the other guys are running downfield covering somebody. There's a lot of room to run. Dave Telford, who redshirted last year behind the great All-American Kevin Sweeney, hands up the middle now. Courtney Griffin is wrapped up quickly. Nice play by the strong safety, number 13, Lane McCarthy. Again, a safety blitz to the right hole. Just had him coming through there. Nobody was there to block him, and he made the tackle. So, tell you what, Joe, Kelly Skipper still got four yards on the play. Okay, only three. <laughs> Second on seven. As Lane McCarthy, leading uh, returning tackler, had 70 in 1986 for the 49ers. Guys, the seniors still looking for that first career in the center. Flags fly as the pass is caught by Ron Jenkins from Telford, but a flag went up immediately. 
Keith Jenkins, the left quarterback, 27, was right on Jenkins. He's getting some high fives coming back, but no celebration. Tell you what, has a dangerous pass. That motion on uh, Fresno State, another penalty on them. Amazing how many penalties we've had this game. Their star of our game may be our official. And Jim Sweeney is not pleased on the sideline. He's having a few words with assistants and everybody knows how everybody's backing away from him. Well you notice also <laughs> when he was 14 and nothing he had his shades on. Now yeah. that he's getting close, I think he's taking him off to get a better view. Second checking down. There's the penalty situation. Look at that. Eight for 62 yards. You know, when you break a football game down, Sagan, you get so few possessions. Uh, you take a look at those minus yards and penalties and really kill you. Yeah, it stops drives, puts you in terrible situations that make you commit turnovers because it's long yardage and the defense can play the tendency. It's a second down, 12, the ball on the 17, looking to pitch back with Jenkins, could not do it. Jenkins throws right now, looking to throw, and finally goes out of bounds. Well, they had a couple plays possible, and nothing worked. Well, really, because of David Riley, 94, the outside linebacker. Well, he wanted to throw it back to the quarterback, but they had two guys, Philip Morrison and Stacey Alexander, over there. In fact, the way when he was running, told you, Telford was sprinting down the sideline after the pitch. That's a, a good play in college. The quarterback is an eligible receiver at all times. Of course, in pro ball, once you take a snap from the team formation, you become ineligible. Third down and 14. Fresno State is three of eight in their third down conversions. They have to get to the five yard line for a first and goal. Three wide receivers in the game this time. First time we've seen that. Ole Cooks is in the backfield with the quarterback. Mr. Jenkins going in motion. Looking over the middle, he hits the tight end. It's the 15. He's going to be pushed down at the 12, way short of a first down. It was Craig Jones, 87, the tight end release, and then dragged across the middle and did not pull Keith Jenkins, 27, or Gutierrez, number five, made the play. Watch Jones. He sets up and then delays out. They had the all-out blitz, and he hits him with good coverage and good pursuit. You'll give him that underneath pattern on third down and long. That brings up a fourth down situation, and Barry Bell eyes in to attempt about to, just about a 30-yard field goal. I guess it's inside the 20, so it's going to be officially a 29-yard. Attempt. These are automatic, they say, for this guy. Barry Belli. High snap. Jenkins, good job. Gets it down. Belli kicks it up, and it's good. Little extra credit there for Jenkins on the hole. 4.49 left in the third quarter. The Bulldogs now lead by 10. A lot of people are really going to feel the cold this winter. So add an extra layer of Owens Corning pink insulation. Oh, it's Corning. We put your house in the paint. His driver's license. He flew 325 missions in Vietnam. One ended early. He flew around the world without stopping. And today, Dick Rutan flies around in an hour. They say the car you drive says a lot about you. But we think the kind of people who drive our cars says a lot about Audi. When you're ready to follow your own road, you're ready for an Audi. The Great American Face. Strong. Sensitive. The Great American Razor. Atra Plus. Solid. With a Luber Smooth Strip for extra protection. The Great American Face deserves the Great American Shade. Atra Plus. Only from Gillette. the games all the time. ESPN, the total sports network. Well, Barry Belli just kicked his 60th career field goal to move him to his tie on for 10th on the all-time list with Maryland's Jess Atkinson and Clemson's Obed Arari. Uh, the leader in that list is Jeff Jager of Washington with 80. And Jager, a third-round draft pick of the Browns this year, is now their regular kicker in Cleveland. 
Royce and the Terrapins. Stan White there. <laughs> John for Maryland. Jess Atkinson, of course, the kicker for the Redskins up until he got his leg broke about two weeks ago. Belli to kick off for Fresno State. Taken deep by Brian Brown as he comes left. Turns the corner, 20, 25, 30. Ball knocked out of his hands and knocked out of bounds at the 39. It will be Long Beach State's football. Now let's recap that scoring drive that led to Belli's 60th career field goal. It took him nine plays to go 59 yards to get Belli in position for that 29-yard field goal with five minutes left in the third quarter. The Bulldogs lead 17-7. Here's the score. Celebrate Cardinal fans 8-2. St. Louis beats Montreal. They clinch the National League East. So it makes no difference what happens in that Met Cardinal series in St. Louis this weekend. Under pressure, Graham unloads it to the fullback. Lafayette Shelton. Shelton down the right sideline. Close to the first down. Knocked out of bounds at midfield by Tony Harris, number four. Tell you what, Long Beach continues to stay in the game. They make big plays. Brian Browning went to, took that kickoff all the way back to the 40. And then Lafayette Sheldon on a screen pass against the blitz. A lot of times, if you get that baby off, you can break it all the way. Only the pursuit saved that one because there was really nobody out there to defense that uh, well-conceived screen by Long Beach. Derek Washington goes split to the top. Mark Say that the touchdown comes flank to the bottom. Split backfield behind Jeff Graham from midfield and a first down for the 49ers. The draw play goes up the middle to Robertson. Roberts goes inside. Bulldog territory down to the 46-yard line. Rob Webster, number 19, made the tackle. There's strong safety. That was all Michael Roberts, too, who made a good move because they blitzed right into it. You, you know, a blitz against the draw, you should throw it for a loss, but Roberts made a good, quick first move, made one man miss, and got five yards out of it. Second down, six now for the 49ers. <laughs> Jeff Graham, boy, I tell you, the backfield shifted. It wasn't where Jeff thought they were going to be. <laughs> they call like, uh, confusion in the backfield. It looked like about it. Uh, Canadian football. They were had kind of a half-step move before they went out there. The crowd reacting to the wave here. You see, he turns to hand the ball off, and there's nobody there. <laughs> he said, well, okay, let me just run with it then. He does get a couple yards out of it, save what could have been a loss. Into at least a yard game because third and four is a lot different than third and seven. Ball the 45 yard line. 49ers need the 40. Outside, Mike Roberts gets down about the 41 or two yard line. He'll be shy of the first down. Well, do you go for it here? Heck yes. What the heck? Huh? Nothing to save it for. Coach Rice Bay talking it over there with his offensive staff. Now it just said yes. Boys, I believe in you. Let's go for this. Right. He's got a lot of players around there yelling, we can make it. Yeah. Of course, that's always afterward. They'll be saying, geez, I, don't, I can't believe he went for it. <laughs> well, Jeff Graham checked the plays on his wrist. He has Michael Otis. Great speed in the backfield along with Lafayette Shelton. They need to get to the 40-yard line. Fourth down and two. Players jumping around. Graham takes the snap. Hands off. Diving for it. I don't know if he got to. He didn't get it. I don't think so. 67, Jethro Franklin. They run right at him. Jethro, I think, has turned the ball back over to his teammates. When you run that open formation like that, you just invite him to blitz. You usually need to run with two tight ends and close up the formation a little to slow down that, that blitzing uh, defense, that bulldog defense. But they left it wide open. I mean, I don't know what they're measuring. I don't not even close. Unless they left some links off in the field. First down, Fresno State, the Bulldog defense has risen up here, and that may have been a very big play in this football game. When they put those lines on the field, that's referees that said, hey, if it's not up to the line, it's not a first down. But maybe, I guess he's up really hadn't had enough uh, time on the air. A little air time for the chain crew. Did a good job, didn't they? He's gone, anyhow. So Dave Telford brings the men in red back on the attack. He's got Brock Smith split in. Ron Jenkins is the flanker. 
Hand off inside. It goes to Griffin. Griffin finds the hole to 50 for 45. First and 10 for Fresno State. Boy, this freshman out of Central High School right here in his hometown of Fresno has really put on a performance tonight here. Six carries, 45 yards. Watch the tackle trap. Jeff Skidmore comes across, knocks out the defensive man, Al Akins, defensive end. That play has worked all night long. It's a counter trap play. A little cross-buck action, and both Griffin and Skipper have got big yardage on that play. That's Ron Jenkins, who's... Picking himself up here, shaking up on that last play for Fresno State. We have two minutes and 27 seconds left in the third quarter. The Bulldogs leading here 17 to 7. Jenkins are there helping off three receptions for 48 yards tonight. Well, if you just joined us around the nation, let's bring you up to date on what's happened here at Bulldog Stadium in Fresno. It started off all Fresno State. Skipper a one-yard run. The uh, kick failed. And Anthony Williams, a 13-yard run on the flank to reverse. They got the two-point conversion. Then it was saved. The four-yard touchdown pass from Graham made it 14-7. With four seconds left in the first half. Belli kicked the field goal. That's the difference now. 17-7. Up the middle. Breaking the tackle. Outside the 40. 35. 30. One out of bounds around the 25-yard line. Dean Pollard. He has played well tonight. 22-yard gain. Again, breaks a tackle in the backfield. Turns a loss into a big gain. See it right here. Watching it's another little trap play. This time, two guys pulling around. Had him in the backfield. Just missed him. And he breaks it. And when you beat that blitz, you beat that first wave to get to the line. Then you're off to the races. And some of the defensive backs got to come back up to make the tackle to get a big game. And it's Dean Collins averaging almost eight yards of snap tonight. That was a 22-yard run. First and ten on the 24-yard line. Mickey Man missing his grip, and now he goes to the outside. And two 49ers come up and hit him. Short gain, if any, on the play. John McMaster, 48. Ron Frost, number 16, reserve defensive back. Come in to play well for the 49ers. Well, you see they're missing a lot of tackles on defense. And a lot of that has to do with the fatigue factor. You played these three games, you get worn down, you've been on the field almost the whole game. I tell you, you lose just that little fraction of either uh, speed or strength, and you'll miss a tackle. Second down and eight for Fresno State. Hand off again, Griffin, and they meet him right at the line. Wrapped up, thrown down again by John McMaster, number 48. A lot of Pacific Coast Athletic Association action this week in big games. Fullerton State, the conference leader at 2-0. and Opens the conference season for league favorite San Jose State, the defending champions. New Mexico State plays at Pacific. And a couple of the PCA teams have traditional non-conference rivals. Friday, Utah State faces Brigham Young. Saturday, Nevada, Las Vegas will host Nevada, Reno. 49 seconds left in the quarter. Third and six. Telford, all kinds of time. Look, throw, hit the fan at the five. Knocked down at the three-yard line is Anthony Williams. First and gold, Bulldogs. 38 seconds left in the third quarter. And that may have been the backbreaker right there. They had the blitz. Good protection, though. And a great throw by Telford. And just a great a catch by Williams, who went up and got the ball and brought it down. He only had three catches going into this game. Of course, he had the end around. That's his first perception of the night. Good for 18 yards. Look at Telford. Plenty of time and rifles a shot right in there. Anthony uh, Williams at six foot. Reached up for it. Brings it down. First and goal to goal at the two for the dogs. This is Griffin and twisted and knocked down. We have not seen Tilly Skipper much of this second half at all. Tell you what, this is another goal line situation. <laughs> San Jose State seems to rise to the occasion in this goal line as the third quarter ends. Well, they'll go down to the other side here to start the fourth quarter. The Bulldogs lead the 49ers 17 to 7. We come back second and goal. Fresno State at the Long Beach 2. Don't miss.
It's our biggest sale of the year. It's Car Care Days at your Napa Auto Parts store. Just about everything you need to keep your car in great shape is on sale now. Get special prices on quality Napa parts. Check your local newspaper for sale items at your Napa Auto Parts store and save at our Car Care Days sale. All the right parts in all the right places. Napa. company has more pride in what they do, or more pride in how well they do it. We offer you a meaningful and fulfilling future, one that goes far beyond the ordinary, one that brings with us the respect and admiration of Americans everywhere. We're not a company, we're your country. We're the Air Force, the Marines, the Army, the Navy. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. My brother Dick bought a Magnavox camcorder. Gonna shoot TV movies, right, Dick? Sure. Big lights, the whole thing. Don't need lights. With this, I can shoot by candlelight. Yeah, but he's forgetting about outdoor action. And hey, all it's that. got high shutter speed for clean, fast action. Yeah, but what about all the other things? You've got to be in... Tom, this new camcorder by Magnavox has got everything. It's fully automatic, has instant playback, weighs just three and a half pounds, and it's so simple that even my... Yeah, head... I know. Even his brother can use it. That's right, you got it. <laughs> Look over here. Come on. My parents really liked you. I'm glad. Hey, I could use another cup of coffee. Me too. Oh, let's stop for some. Yeah, I need gas anyway. When you stop at a Shell station, you get more than America's best-selling gasoline. You get all the little extras. Coffee? Fresh food you may not find at other stations. And because so many Shell stations are open 24 hours... Good night. Kind of late, folks. Drive carefully now. Chances are you'll never have to go far to find what you're looking for. Shell. Experience the difference. Welcome back to Fresno State. The Bulldogs have a second and goal at the two-yard line. There's the attendance tonight. Over 32,000 fans here. The red wave, and they were being whipped up by the crowd. The offensive lineman led by 6'6", 297-pound tackle. Mike Lifkin carried him on. The dead T formation straight across. Sims, Collins, Skipper. Unbalanced right. Lifkin went over to the right side. Watch him right behind him. And now Skipper dive. Touchdown. Flag flies. I think it was after the touchdown, though. Kelly Skipper. You're wondering what had happened to him. He hadn't seen him much this half. Came in on that dead T formation. Followed the block nicely. Dove into the end zone. And then a flag flew high in the air. But I don't think it's going to affect the touchdown. Dead ball. Personal foul. After the score, the penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. The penalty is against the defense. And that means the touchdown is good. Watch this touchdown. They put both tackles, Whitcomb and Skidmore, on the right. Just let uh, Kelly Skipper follow them into the end zone on a two-yard run. He's got 21 carries for 89 yards and two touchdowns tonight. But that's a lot of beef over there. Skidmore, 285. Whitcomb, 297. <laughs> Starting close to 600 pounds on the hook over there. No eye to attempt the 24th point for Fresno State. Get a high snap. They bring it down nicely, and Jenkins is the man again who pulled it down. Belli knocks it through. We're just underway in the fourth quarter. The Bulldogs have extended their lead. Gentlemen, <laughs> When you're ready to follow your own road, you're ready for an Audi. Bob, I need a trainer. How about Eddie? He's just a kid. So was I. You've worked long and hard to get there. When the time comes, you hope you're ready. You may. This bus for you. The best of the NFL. Every Sunday, ESPN delivers hard hitting highlights from every single game. NFL Primetime. Sunday on the exclusive cable home of the NFL, ESPN. Now the Bulldogs leading the 
Trillators will push up. Hopefully stops at 24. And the Bulldog and Thugs was hanging out already tonight. <laughs> Tell you what, uh, San Jose's got their onside kick return team in there because the 15-yard penalty puts the ball right at midfield, and a lot of people automatically uh, go with an onside kick to try to get the football back after a 15-yard penalty. Here comes Belli, and he kind of gives it that uh, deep onside and picked up at the 13-yard line, making a nice move around is Mike Roberts. As a recap, Fresno State's scoring drive for you. 59 yards, 7 plays, took 2 minutes and 35 seconds, and it was Kelly Skipper, number 26, going in for the touchdown, his second touchdown of the evening, the fifth time in Kelly's career that he scored two touchdowns for Fresno State. San Jose's got to do something quick. They're going to a single back. Long Beach sets it up. Jeff Graham split back. Graham hands to the back and it's Browning and Browning gets uh, just up to about the 20 yard line and he jumped on in a hurry there. Short gain on the play. All kinds of red over there led by Dave Ferguson, number 91, the nose guard. Now this is the time and this is the situation Coach Weisberg did not want to be in for Long Beach State because he knew his kids were going to have a tough time bouncing back with such short rest after a tough game at Michigan. Audible right here. He's it. they got to start putting the ball in the air and hoping. Graham, classic drop back passer, fires over the middle. Incomplete, big defensive hit by Fred Wilbur, number eight. Senior right cornerback out of Carson, California. And the right play call, you get a blitz, you want to run the quick slant. Just Wilburn just timed that perfectly. He got there right out of the ball. Looked uh, almost as if he got there a little early, but the referee ruled that it was a simultaneous contact, and that's what you want as a defensive player. Jeff Graham waits for that play to come in. They're one of nine on third down conversions for 49ers tonight. This is third and nine. They need to get almost to the 30 for a first down. Grant quickly drops, throws down the side and looking for Say, and it's over. His outstretched hands, incomplete. Fourth down. Long Beach State will have to kick it away again. Keith McCoy, number 40 over there defensively, along with Tony Harris, number four. Yeah, that was close, too. They may have just not called that because the ball was uh, uncatchable, but he was close to making contact with that football was in the air. But again, it's another punting situation for Long Beach. Luhan has been busy tonight. Long Beach State punter. Take a look at it from how the deep receiver sees it back there. Let the ball bounce. No, he's going to pick it up, and he is smothered in a hurry as Anthony Williams. He took the high hop, took a chance, and it'll be Fresno State again. Position. We come back. Domino's Pizza delivers quality. <laughs> It takes fresh baked quality to avoid the noise. We keep the noise out and all the quality in. So avoid the noise. Call Domino's Pizza now for hot quality pizza. Domino's Pizza delivers. Are you looking for a convenient way to deliver time-sensitive documents? Xerox and Phillips office machines have the answer. The Xerox 7010-7021 fax telecopiers. The Xerox fax system sends printed copies over phone lines anywhere in as little as 15 seconds. And it's easy to use. And now through October 30th, Phillips office machines is giving away a Xerox memo writer with the purchase of any Xerox fax telecopier. So see Phillips, your Xerox dealer for the valley. How about them dogs? They're not talking about Georgia dogs. These are Fresno State dogs. They've looked good tonight. They lead 24-7. They have a first down and 10 at their 48. Dave Telford will not get a chance to throw his flag go. Temperatures drop down nicely. It's 75 degrees now here in Fresno, California. We're coming up on about quarter to nine. Started this game with temperatures in the 90s. Very cooler for... Long Beach is in one, that's for sure. Not any cooler for their coach Larry Rice big either. Larry with a career mark of two and two in his first season. There's
some of the Red Wave fans. Love their football team. That's when they raised, these people here in Fresno raised $7 million to build this stadium. And they're proud of their football program. Big rush put on, and the down goes Dave Telford, the quarterback. In there, 74, Nate Dayton jumped on top of the pile. Michael McCauley, 59, was under 270-pound Nate. Now Akins is the guy that put the pressure on him to begin with. Uh, we mentioned him before as their leading lineman. Has one sack already tonight. Just missed having another one. He'll get a little a, a hurry out of that, it's called. If you make the quarterback pull the ball down or throw it too quickly. Second down, 15 now for Fresno State. Ball on the 43. They've got to get to the Long Beach, 42. Telford throws and oh, just out of the hand, incomplete. Headed for Brock Smith, close to an interception for Ron Frost, but Frost made the commitment, and if Brock had been able to get the deflection, it's going to be six. Well, I tell you what, if uh, Ron Frost could have got around his body, he makes the break. Look, he has, he's all set there. If he wouldn't have slipped, he wouldn't have been in his way. He'd have got that and uh, ran for a touchdown. It's a good thing that Brock Smith slipped because he stopped Frost from making the interception. That's the first incompletion that Telford's had this pass. Looking at your new starting quarterback for Fresno State. Boy, they have some great ones here, but certainly none better than the coach's son, Kevin Smith. Richard Melba Dallas. Pumping, going deep down the sideline, incomplete, intended for Anthony Williams. Kevin Smitty gets really a, a second life with the NFL strike. And just when he thinks he's ready for a start, who walks back into camp but Danny White. So Kevin uh, made all of the uh, local news here and all the TV stations last night with his comments about what a short distance it is from the penthouse to the outhouse. And he's getting another chance. Alexander is back deep as Belli puts it away. High spiral. Alexander gets ground and he's going to pay for it. Oh, flag flies. He was crushed down there. But a flipping penalty on top of that. Robert Nobles, number 42, getting all the high fives and tens and everything else over there. And it was a clip as well against Long Beach State. So, boy, the 49ers can't get a break. 12.46 left in the football game. They'll mark off the penalty here. And if we come back, Long Beach State starts deep in its own territory. Clipping by the receiving team during the run back. First down. Maybe you saw it on TV, read about it in magazines, but now you can see it right here at Fresno Mazda. The all-new 1988 Mazda 929, a super affordable luxury car that leads the lineup of our 1988 models. And they're all here. But if you want a real bargain, hurry for a fantastic closeout deal on our 1987 models. Plus, get $1,000 cash back. But hurry, it's a sellout savings you'll never see again on new 1987 Mazdas. Fresno Mazda. The fact that Rodway is more than Buick was Fresno's best kept secret. Now we'd like to let another cat out of the bag. A huge shipment of Jeep Wranglers and Cherokees have arrived, making Rodway the biggest Jeep dealership in Central California. To make room for him and the Buick 88, we're clearing out these 87s. You've got the buying clout now. So take that easy ride down 41 to the McKinley exit to the corner of Blackstone and McKinley. Find out why Rodway is the right way right now. Bulldog Stadium, Fresno, California. Tonight's live ESPN college football game, Fresno State versus Long Beach State, is being brought to you by Dodge Import Trucks and the new Dodge Ram 50 and Raider. We're going places. And by Nike. Now the Fresno State fans in this football game now in Long Beach State starting for the fourth time tonight inside their 10-yard line can't get the playoff. Well, the players are whipping up the fans as well as the uh, mascot down here waving his towel, but at this point they got everything going for them. They don't even need to whip anybody up because they've been whipping up on Long Beach. The or else 
has worked for Jim Swinney. <laughs> the ultimatum. Now, here's something else. He was quoting the uh, Chinese general Sun Tzu. Throw a little Plato on us. Uh, he's a colorful guy, and so is this bulldog. His tongue's been hanging out all night. I thought it was the heat at first. But <laughs> Boy, that's imagine that. Being in that outfit, 100 degrees, part of the game. This guy's tough. Beach State, their own five yard line, gets it in their own end zone. Here comes Roberts out, tries to get outside, and is thrown out of bounds at around the eight yard line. It was number four, Tony Harris, the free safety, who was over there. Here we talked about in uh, free game what San Jose would have to do. Long names are on Long Beach. So whenever you brought up what they were going to do earlier, I got to keep saying it wrong. What Long Beach had to do was be able to throw that football, that short pass again, into eight-man front. Well, they haven't, their field position has been so bad, they haven't been able to do anything but try to run out and stay alive. Robert Shelton behind Jeff Graham. Graham looking for some running room. Hands it in to Lafayette Shelton, the fullback. He spun down as he crosses the 10 up to about the 12-yard line. Garnett Fountain, number 94, makes the tackle on the play. Looking ahead for these football teams, Fresno State has a non-conference game coming up October 10th against Southern Illinois. And then the game in the Pacific Coast Athletic Association this year, October 17th here against San Jose. favorite team, San Jose State. Well, they are the league champions, picked to win again. Hard right, to keep them off your mind. San Jose State here, October 17th for the dogs. The 49ers, Jeff Graham, looking, has a man outside, hits him at the 23-yard line. It's going to be good for the first down. Catch made by number 17, Derek Washington, the split in. And Fred Wilbur, number eight, over on the tackle. For Long Beach State, they will have the at Pacific. Those poor guys never get to go home, October 10th. Then they come home to take on New Mexico State October 17th. So the next home date for you Long Beach fans, October 17th, New Mexico State. First and 10 for the 49ers at the 24-yard line. Head off inside, Brian Browning. Anyway, I don't know really what they're trying to accomplish here. I don't know if they're just trying to keep it close or what. Because they might as well start throwing a ball because Fresno continues to blitz all the time. Might as well try to go and make the big play. And a team that blitzes, they're either going to make the play on you or you can make it on them. They're giving you an opportunity. Go after it. Put the ball in the air. Hope something good happens. You know, that pass play a moment ago uh, for the first down was Long Beach State's first, first down of the second half. 11 minutes. Now left in the football game. It's Fresno State 24, Long Beach State 7. Looking for more. Jeff Graham running for his life. Two red shirts after him. They got him inside the 10. Ron Cox 54, Garnett Fountain 94. And the dogs are smelling blood now. Ron Cox, a freshman, his second sack. Watch number 54. He just outruns Jeff Graham, the quarterback. Well, he did what he was supposed to do. He started to go inside there, but he knew he had that outside contain. And everybody from the right side just flushed him over there. Really, he should thank his buddies for bringing the quarterback out to him. He almost made the big mistake. He started to go inside, but then he stayed out where he was supposed to be. And when you're supposed to be you're in the right spot where you're supposed to be, you come up with some big plays. Also helped to have four seven speed. <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> Graham on third and 24. Kicks it down and down goes Jeff. Jeff Rowe. Oh, and Jeff Rowe Franklin, 67, is around his ankles. His second sack of the night. The dogs, remember, this is the same Fresno State team that had 10 sacks against UCLA. That's amazing, but the stat that really uh, befuddles your mind is the 70 they had oh, last year no. in 11 games. Willie Lujan, again, deep in end zone to punt it out for Long Beach State. Fair catch call for again, and taken there by Anthony Williams, and the dogs will start in 49er territory. The Long Beach 48 when we come back to Fresno. 
How do other Japanese imports see the 1988 Dodge Ram 50? The Toyota Ram 50 roomier standard cab looks like this. The Mazda Ram 50's more powerful standard engine looks like this. And the Nissan Ram 50's bigger standard payload looks like this. So if you're looking for more than you bargained for, you'll find it at your Dodge dealer, along with the roomy new Ram 50 sports cab. Dodge import trucks, we're going places. Do something. Anything. You say you want a revolution. Well, you know. We all want to change the world. All right. All right. ESPN delivers live championship sports action Sunday. Driver of the Year candidate Dale Earnhardt races toward another record-setting win at the Holly Farms 400. Then the biggest event in seniors golf. Arnold Palmer and Gary Player headline the Million Dollar Vantage Championship live. Top three-year-old thoroughbreds run for Horse of the Year votes at the Pennsylvania Derby. And NFL Primetime delivers highlights from every single game. Championship action Sunday on ESPN. Welcome back to Fresno, California. 9.22 left in our live Thursday night college football game here on ESPN. Fresno State with the football and a 24-7 lead. Bring the tight end over from right to left side, Craig Jones and Telford. Hands off, breaking outside at the 45, at the 40. On his feet, the 35 to 33. The fullback, Dean Collins, going into that play. Fresno State had 45 running plays for 208 yards. Added another 16 yards to that. Had 24 pass plays for 196. An update, they now have 420 yards. Time of possession, 31 minutes, 32 seconds for the Bulldogs. 20 minutes, 6 seconds for Long Beach State. I was going to say before that first play that I would expect them to go right down the field. Now, I think they've got uh, Long Beach almost in submission. Alfred looking to throw, throws the back side, has the man complete down to the 26-yard line. Again, the fullback, Dean Collins. That's the uh, play-action pass out that tackle trap that we've seen so many times tonight. This time he just keeps it. Again, how many times have we talked about the uh, back sneaking out of the backfield and nobody picking him up? The same thing happened there. If the pass would have been a little bit better, I think it may have been tipped to line. He could have caught that on the run and kept it turned up and went down the sidelines. Pretty nice stats for Dave Telford tonight. Second down three at the 49er 26 yard line. Outside again is Collins. Cuts it back in. And looks like he'll have another first down. And you're right, and they're hammering now. Well, we've talked about before the game. When you're that tired, you've had to travel that much and play those many games, you better do something on the field to keep the enthusiasm going. You need a little adrenaline to keep you going because just what you have physically is not going to do it. You need that extra adrenaline. It got a little bit at halftime, but it didn't carry over into the second half. They made no plays in the second half. First down and 10 at the 49er 21 yard line. Pitch goes back to Griffin. Griffin, oh, smacked at the 20 yard line. And hey, Al Aikens hasn't let up any. The defensive end gave him a smack. Well, we set up the story for you early on that uh, what Long Beach State had to do was protect the quarterback, and Fresno State needed their quarterback to play well. And that's uh, basically what the story has been. Fresno State, six defensive sacks, and complete domination of the uh, line of scrimmage in Telford in uh, his first uh, real start. I think he started the game early in the season, but the first real start where they say, you're the quarterback, has great stats and a great game. Second down and nine. Telford split back, split, slot to the left side. Again, picking his way up the middle of Dean Collins. He's got to be exhausted. <laughs> They've gotten a lot of mileage out of Dean Collins, that fullback who, 
again in the spring ball when they told him you're going to be switched from tailback to fullback he quit and said I'm not going to be a fullback and then they brought him back and explained to him how much more they'd use him in the offense and he decided that he'd take them at their word and it's worked out pretty well for him had a big night tonight you can't figure out why he'd rather be a second team tailback yeah. than a first string fullback and you're not going to get a lot of playing time, you think, by a skipper. He's six, carries 40 yards tonight. He's caught two balls for 25 yards as Dean Collins. Telford drops straight back to pass. Looking over the middle all the way. Has his man, Ron Jenkins, close to a first down. See where they mark it, right at the 10. It will be first down. A good protection, but the, uh, the official took out Marcio Gutierrez, the linebacker. He ran right in. Let's see if we can see it right here. I don't know if we'll see it, but he knocked down the linebacker and opened up that whole zone. You see it right there. You can see it at the bottom of your screen. He tripped him, knocked him down. There was nobody there to put the pass coverage. Jenkins makes the catch. First down, goal to goal now for the Dogs at the 10-yard line. Clock counting down. Six minutes, three seconds left in the game. Inside handoff, Griffin's going to walk in. Touchdown. Courtney Griffin. They clapped it again. He had the whole right side open. Walks in from 10 yards out. Attempt the extra point as the Bulldogs, who has scored offensively only three touchdowns in a one and two start to the season, have put now 31 points up on the board as the kick is up and good. 5.56 left to play in this one, and Fresno State is getting ready for the big play, and now they're saying no good on the extra point. Let's correct yourself. No good on the extra point. 30 to 7. Introducing the 1988 Dodge Rear. Pound for pound, the best standard equipped import 4x4 on or off the road. With everything from automatic locking hubs Toyota's base 4Runner won't give you, to an inclinometer Nissan doesn't have. The way we see it, that's how a 4x4 like Dodge Raider should be. And the way the competition sees Raider is usually like this. Dodge import trucks. We're going places. This is the 19-inch television with a picture as crisp and clear as any you'll find. Now imagine a picture just as crisp, just as clear, but larger. In fact, it's 86% larger than even a 26-inch screen. It's the world's first 35-inch direct view television, the television that only one manufacturer could put together. Mitsubishi. Down there, they're pleased with their team's performance. Sports Center is coming right after the football game. We'll update you on all the sports news, including those pennant races. Good news for Cardinal fans. Somebody forgot to tell them they were on the air. They're sitting waiting <laughs> with their game face on and never got the opportunity, huh? Nice game face. <laughs> Bella is kicking it off again. Ryan Browning at his seventh. 15, 20. 25 out of bounds. Thomas Ireland comes him out over there. Long Beach State. Total offense, 17 yards this half and one first down. Here's that counter play for the touchdown. Withicum comes across. You can see you got a trapper that weighs near 300 pounds. He can open up a hole, and he did. That play has worked all night long. I'm sure a Long Beach will be seeing that play in their dreams for a few days at least. Under six minutes to play, Jeff Graham, the quarterback. He's got running Shelton in there in the backfield. Hands off to Browning, jumps over the middle, and gets up to about the 28-yard line. Tony Harris, number four, the free safety, made the tackle. Yeah, I don't know whether he's running now just because he wants to continue with the same game plan, uh, have that balanced attack, or whether he just wants to run the clock out. <laughs> Coach Rice Bagan. Hope those Long Beach State fans stick with him, folks. He's got off to a tough start with all the fundraising he had to do and late start in the team, but 
He's got the track record to get this program turned around. He'll stick with him down there. He'll fall to two and three tonight, 0 and two in the conference. Outside goes Brian Browning. Run out there. Keith McCoy, left quarterback, chases him out. Stops the clock. It's 5-11 left to play, and the Bulldog fans, that red wave is breaking up. Many of them heading for the exits now. Yeah, I'm sure they're a happy group because they're not exactly sure what type of team that they have post Kevin Sweeney here. Uh, Mark, I mean, uh, Telford gives them a little bit of an idea that they may have somebody that can at least lead this team now. Washington and McCullough, the wideouts. They go straight up the middle. That gives him the first down on third and short. Let's see now if he's got some field position here. And absolutely nothing to lose if he'll let Jeff Graham turn it loose again. <laughs> Mark Stay comes in. He was the man who made the big touchdown catch with four seconds left in the first half that accounted for the only 49er points. Been a long night for those young men from Long Beach. Of course, they get to go back to the beach tomorrow, so... First and ten. Here's the pitch. Browning in trouble in the backfield. Made one spin move, but there were too many dogs there to cover him up. Knocked down for a loss on the play. Yeah. Come on, coach, let's throw the ball. Yeah, I think that uh, first that first down they just got was only their sixth of the uh, game. Uh, you aren't doing too much offensively if you're only going to get six first downs. Really, the only plays they've had were those two first those two plays right at the end of the half, 48 yard uh, pass play and a 42 yard run. Other than that, they've been their water's been completely shut off. And Jim Sweeney knows he may have to give his boys a little rest now. <laughs> he worked him hard during the 13 days off he said they had. Oh, smothered again. Poor Jeff Grant. Down he goes. Chuck McCutcheon, number 90, led the charge also into celebration. Nick Rogeroli, number 77, uh, got a piece. But McCutcheon was the first one there. For the sacks and the minus yardage keep mounting up against the 49ers. That's one of those sacked by the whole of the line. As they, were, they were all coming in there. They're all fighting to see who gets there first. I think you had to give it the number 90 on that play. Chuck McCutcheon gets the credit. A lot of help in there, too. Third down, 25. <laughs> okay, Jeff, you get to call the play this time, son. All right. Draw play. There you go. <laughs> Nowhere to go. Ryan Brown. Jethro. Caught quickly by Jethro Franklin. <laughs> Jethro makes a lot of uh, plays. Not only rushed the passengers, plays well against the run and stays at home that time on the draw play. A good uh, tackle, open field tackle. Anthony Williams, our three is deep. Luhan tips it away again. Again, a fair catch taken at the 48 yard line. Fresno State's offense comes back on the field and we'll be back in a moment. It all started 68 years ago. What followed were the most extraordinary driving machines of their day. But none more extraordinary than this. The 168 horsepower BMW 325i. The latest expression of our seven decade passion for driving. The new 1987 BMWs are in at Weber Motors. In Tulare, on October 24th and 25th, is the International Agri Center's Golden Harvest Days Extravaganza. A truck and street rod show featuring a working truck per day, a custom car show, mini trucks, low riders, and an auto stereo competition. Entrants will compete for $5,000 in cash prizes and trophies. That's October 24th and 25th at the Tulare International Show and Festival Grounds off Highway 99 at Page Avenue or Avenue 200. Co-sponsored by Miller Beer and 7-Up Distributors. Call 688-1751 for entry information. Friday, the world's super welterweight crown goes up for grabs on ESPN. Budweiser presents Lupe Aquino and Jim Franco Rossi in a knockout night of action. Friday on ESPN. Back at Bulldog Stadium, Fresno, California, 251 left. Fresno State on the sidelines there. 30 to 7, they lead the 49ers, and a new quarterback has come in. Number 12, the sophomore Eric Bouchel. 
pitches back to a new set of running back, sweeping he on the right side, inside the 50, is Daryl Rosette, number 22. Also in there, Andre Alexander, number one, it's split in. Sell changes for Jim Sweeney as the Dogs will even their record this season at 2-2. Two and two. John McMaster, 48, made the tackle. And Jim Sweeney's got to feel good about the return of his offense here. You guys feel good about, about a lot of things tonight. Their defense played well again, and that defense is rounding into shape after a tough start of his own. Bouchelle hands the backfield. Hole on the left side this time, and coming through to about the 42-yard line, Darrell Rosette. And look at Eric Bouchelle, who has to rate as one of our students of the game. Business major, 3.16 GPA. Of course, the name Bouchelle may ring a bell. His uh, brother, Steve Bouchelle, plays for the Texas Rangers. And Bouchelle didn't do a bad job when he was a quarterback either. In fact, he had better stats than Telford did. But you, as he said before the game, you just got to pick one of them and go with them and stick with one quarterback. First down and 10 at the 41-yard line of Long Beach State. Going across the 40 now is Darrell Lozette. He's the transfer from Arizona State University. They've been wanting to get him in to take a look at this young man who's got a lot of speed out of the backfield. Well, Michael got, McCauley made the tackle. they got the opportunity to take a look at a lot of people right now. At home, I'm sure they've right. dressed just about everybody, and everybody may get in the game. Scores, highlights, all the sports news on the Sports Center coming up right after the game. So stay with us here on ESPN. Now Garden Hire makes the catch from Eric Bruchel. Garden Hire number five is another new man who pops up on the roster here as we're counting down to the one minute mark left in this football game. So Fresno State makes a successful start of their 1987 PCAA conference season. 1 0. And remember, they have the showdown coming up with San Jose State October 17th here. Michelle hands off inside. There's a hole stumbling across the 30 yard line. Again, as Daryl Rosette for a first down will stop the clock with 44 seconds left to play. And I guarantee you, San Jose's defense will be closing that trap play. That's what you got to do. When somebody's trapping you, the guy that's getting trapped sooner or later has got to make the adjustment, come down the line of scrimmage, and stop that play, stop it, not just stand there and take the block. 30 seconds, clock running. First down, Bouchelle fires. He's got a man wide open there and taking a shot, being knocked down with a flick of an arm. Andre Alexander, that had a look of a Stan White highlight play there. A little flipper comes out. That's right. That was R.J. Corey's number seven who tagged him there. I like the opportunity to get those, but uh, that will be the uh, last play of the game, I suppose. With eight seconds left. I can't imagine them trying to get another snap off. Now, that's it, but it's a, sure a great game for Jim Sweeney and his Fresno State group. They need a big one, and they got a big one. Here comes Coach Sweeney, his 72nd victory as the head coach, the winningest ever at Fresno State across the field. Now a few words for the first-year head coach, Larry Rysig from Long Beach State. His career record as his team's record this first year, 2-3. and three. We'll be back to wrap it up right after this. How do other Japanese imports see the 1988 Dodge Ram 50? The Toyota Ram 50's roomier standard cab looks like this. The Mazda Ram 50's more powerful standard engine looks like this. And the Nissan Ram 50's bigger standard payload looks like this. So if you're looking for more than you bargained for, you'll find it at your Dodge dealer. Along with the roomy new Ram 50 sports cab. Dodge import trucks, we're going places. When the sun goes down, I call the light up the night. Feel the label red ribbon, a taste that's right. Call the light up the night. They're celebrating at Fresno State. The Bulldogs will open PCA play with a 30 to 7 win over Long Beach State. ESPN's live presentation of college football has been brought to you by the U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. By Coca Cola Company and your local Coca Cola bottler of Coca Cola Classic. 
and by Yoshika. They put a new focus on photography with the new 230 AF autofocus. First second along with Stan White and uh, Stan, the long faces on the young men from Long Beach, but they were out man from the start here in this third road game and a space of 13 days really took a toll on this young football team from Long Beach. Well, we talked about it before the game. All the intangibles were on Fresno State side. And they went out there and took advantage of that. They wore them down. They knew that they were tired. They just kept running on them and running on them and running on them. Plus, they stopped them completely on defense. They took that uh, running game away that, Fresno, that uh, Long Beach was trying to establish. And I just think Long Beach should have went to the air a lot earlier, a lot quicker. They didn't do what they had to do to win. And, uh, Fresno did. We're going to be back to wrap things up here from Fresno. Stay with us. Be right back. I'm Pat Haven for Yashica. From the opening kickoff, the best way to catch all the action is to trap it with Trap Focus with the new Yashica 230AF 35mm autofocus SLR camera. It's so easy to shoot great moments in standard autofocus or follow a player in continuous focus. So no matter what situation you shoot in, you'll catch it all off with the Yashica 230AF. Yashica puts a new focus on photography. I don't know. What are you going to do? I don't know. I'd go to college. Me yeah. too. If I had the money. Yeah. So what are you going to do? I don't know. What are you going to do? You don't want those fries. What are you going to do, Jack? Eat your way to college? Yeah, really. I'm going to college on the new GI Bill. You serve full-time in the armed forces or part-time in the reserves, and you earn a lot of money for tuition. The GI Bill. Are you using that pickle? For young men and women in the armed forces, it's a great place to start. See a local military recruiter. Excuse me, is Muddy around? You got something for him? I just wanted to thank him for his music. You're welcome to wait. Well, I'm a king bee, baby. Buzzing round. Right back once again. Thanks. When Coca-Cola's a part of your life. Who's this from? Play. I like the way you play my music. You can't beat the feeling. Watch closely and see the kitchen faucet that makes life easier. It rises. Mowing New Riser adjusts to your big jobs beautifully. Makes everything a little easier. Mowing's Riser suits your lifestyle. So ask your plumber. He'll have information on the riser and other quality kitchen and bath products that make life better. All yours from Mowing. Well, it was the quarterback getting his second start here in his career at Fresno State that is our Yoshika Picker Perfect player of the game. Dave Telford, 18 of 26, 206 yards, had the hot hand when Fresno State needed it the most. Our final score in this PCA conference game, the Bulldogs of Fresno State have something to smile about tonight. They whip Long Beach State 30 to 7. Remember, coming up, ESPN College Football Doubleheader Saturday, number two, Nebraska, host South Carolina, 4 p.m. Eastern. That'll be followed by a top 20 matchup of LSU hosting the Florida Gators, 7.30 Eastern time, football doubleheader on ESPN. Kelly Skipper, that junior running back, also had a big part to do with this game. Two touchdowns. We'll see the first of them here. A two-point.